We are. Oh shit! Hey everybody! <laughs> I I actually appreciate the abrupt like three two one fake out. Um because I get nervous before we go live. Hey everyone, how's it going? That was the point. Boo boo. You surprised us. <laughs> the two other images they sent are not sending, so I'm gonna resend them. Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some Twitter posts. Hey chat, how's it going? Thanks for turning out tonight. Hey chat, welcome to the Forgotten Indigo Forgotten Preve stream that's happening right now with featuring your camera camera god yes. J Marb. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tweet that we're going live. Send out those ad everyone's do it in surprise round two. If anybody gets yeah. in trouble, I'll bully them. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, J-Man. Thank you, finally. I will not do it in there because I'm sending an image in here and I don't want it to be it in that announcement chat somehow. <laughs> because it is uploading. She does not want to be seen. That's, yeah. In <laughs> That's in <her>. character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you to the subscribers. I believe I saw um, Marzer Resumers subscribe. Thank you for the bits, Lunar Paladin. <laughs> Okay, let me throw out some at Why everyone. Mara is subscribed as well, and uh, bless you. Aloha. Wonder who that is. <gasps> Aloha. Thank you. Wonder who. Yeah, welcome everyone to a uh, pre-stream for one forgotten indigo. I'm your cameraman for this fine evening, as per usual. Uh, Jay, why don't you why don't you warm him up a bit? Oh yeah, uh, so this is uh, this is the very first day zero of the campaign I've been working on for like a year at this point, Forgotten Indigo. It's um, it's gonna be a really good time, and I have two people here who have helped. I have three people here who have helped me a lot actually, because Roma, you you are a player, but you have also assisted in the art department a lot, and all of your contributions are fantastic. But I also have two people here who have helped out extensively with the campaign, and uh, you two should introduce yourselves. Here, Mask, you go first. Hi, folks. I'm Wandering Mask, and... You're gonna love this. It's so fucking good. Jay's been <laughs> his ass off. J-Man's been fucking killing it. It's amazing, and I can't fucking wait for everybody to see it. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Hi, it's me, your good old pal J-Man, and also, you can finally call me a liar. It's allowed now. <laughs> Thank you, Jay, man. <laughs> um, they both have put a lot of work in terms of maps and like assets and just Jay Man's filmed everything and yep. Mm -hmm. There we go. Added surprise round and I think we're good. Hell uh, yeah. Oh my god, Vlanoic, thank you for all the subs and thank you for the hype train. Fuck yeah. Holy, holy crap, thank you so much. <laughs> you so guys are the best. Aaron for subscribing. Oh, thank you, Aram. Um, and like, I gotta once again, I gotta, I gotta especially shout out you guys. Um, like, I swore I was gonna be sentimental at the end, but just going into this, um, I worked a lot on this while my hand was completely out of commission, and it's still not better, but it's it's doing better. Like, it's doing good enough for me to do shit again. But during that time. While I was, like, down and out, I was transcribing everything that's up on the World Anvil that you can check out, uh, somewhere. I got it. Uh, right here. Um, I was transcribing everything that's on the World Anvil by hand, uh, on a, on an iPad using an Apple Pen. And Mask was going through, pulling out every single one from the PDF, transcribing it to text which then J-Man uploaded to the World Anvil. And this is, I shit you not, hundreds of pages of shit. So hey. like- Extremely good shit. I, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, like that, that, really, that really helped keep me sane. Yeah. Um, I want to point out something really fun. I think that some kids would appreciate it. If you look at the Cassius World Anvil real quick, You'll see all those nice little redacted texts. I want to say a little fun fact about those. Uh, so those uh -huh. redacted texts, when I entered them in, 
uh, transcended existence and actually left the web page. <laughs> they went so far. Oh my god. They yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for all that. Like, I I really appreciate all of it. And for the people who are going, yeah, there's only one page on the World Anvil. That's because the World Anvil is going to work like a, uh, if you've ever played like a JRPG, uh, if you've ever played a Trails game, uh, there's like an in-game notebook that updates with character details, with like plot stuff as you do it. And um, we're using it like that. So you only get to see Cassius right now, but... As the game goes on, more and more will unlock because he'll interact with characters. He'll figure shit out about the world. And then you guys will be able to see it too. But what's unique about this is uh, there is a... there. I set this to a tier on the Patreon because you've got to make an account and do jump through a few extra hoops. If you make an account and you sub for $9 on the Patreon, you can be on the same tier as the players, which means you'll get an incomplete look at all these characters that they're going to be talking to because over the course of conversation, you might unlock one of somebody you're speaking to's attributes or one of their gifts, and it's gonna look ugly as fuck from a wiki standpoint, but from a player standpoint, that's all very useful information. So if you sub to the Patreon, you can sort of look ahead and see what see what Rome is seeing, more or less. Um, of course, yeah. all this stuff will be established in game, so it, it's not a spoiler or anything. And if, you're, if your ears are powerful enough, you can just take note of it that way. So, like, don't, don't feel like you gotta. I just want to give something back to you guys because you've been extremely generous. Um, but, yeah, like, thank you, everybody, for turning out. I think we're going to start, like, four minutes. 8.05 seems like a reasonable starting time. That gives people enough time to filter in. Yep. The pictures finally uploaded. My internet decided to die during the intro. Gotcha. <laughs> that we're saying I was roboting, so you you are super back. <laughs> oh my god, I love these. She's I love. Oh, level five hype train! Thank you guys so much for all this. I've never seen one that high. <laughs> good Magic good Mira seven zero one. Thank you so much. Also, I see Mira and my eyes light up. Uh, Sync pilot, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Kora Roki, thank you so much. Not good at names, sorry, thank you so much. Uh, Lunar Paladin, thank you so much. Uh, Shim, I always, I struggle with your name so much. Um, sh uh, sh Shimmy, uh, Shimmy Gan, Shimmy Gangot. Shimmy Gangot? Yeah, I think it's Shimmy Gangot. Thank you so much. I'm I'm trying to keep up because once the game starts, unfortunately, I won't be able to read off quite mm -hmm. as much. I'll try, but, but yeah. I'll give it an... Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, each and every one of you guys for who are subscribing all that. There are so many folks coming in at once right now that we can't actually keep up, so I'm sorry if we, we lose you. Uh, fuck it. If you want to, just fucking uh, at me on Discord and I'll send you a personal thank you via PM. <laughs> J-Man, you are a saint. Thank yeah, you we... all so much, J-Man. Fu fucking deserve everything you're throwing at them. It's <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna love this. Thank you all so, so much. Seriously, you guys are the best. Mm -hmm. And thank you Mars vs. Mars and Agent J-Wall. Um, yeah, like, we've, we've got a good number of people. Thank you all 276 of you. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, thanks for showing. Um, we're gonna we're gonna start in a minute or two, but I just really appreciate you guys turning out for this because I'm gonna I might as well start the spiel slightly right now, but um this is gonna be a little different. And like I'd say you will have the best time going into this if you toss your expectations out the window. Like, if you have a guess for how this is gonna go, how it's gonna be, um just get rid of that. Go with the flow. See what happens, because um the main point of the campaign is, I don't know what's going to happen. Beyond this opening section, um, everything's more or less in Roma's hands, the Dice's hands, and the individual motivations of every single person we've put in this campaign. Uh, so, with that being said, do you think we're just about ready to start, J-Man? Well, I think we are. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Um, oh, uh, also, we gotta request to turn Roma up a little bit more. Sorry. 
Oh, that's cool. Let me, I'll try and scooch a little closer to the mic. I know I have an awful time when it comes to being extremely quiet. And thank you. <laughs> yes, everybody that's a player, please take notes because it's going to be hard for me to take notes while it's happening. <laughs> Share notes with me, please. Yes, information is critically important in this campaign, as you guys will soon discover. Okay. Without any further ado, I'm gonna get us started. Uh, thank you, J-Man and Mask. Uh, I, I'm sorry to banish you to the no-speaky realm. <laughs> it's time, gamers. Yes, it is. Okay, so. Let's start us off. I lie staring up at the sky. Ember's licking across my skin. The inside's burnt out, but that doesn't matter too much to me. All that matters is that I pull it off with grace, you know? Even at the last second? I... I, I hope I managed to pull it off. The entire goal of this was to go out like a cool guy, you know? But it's kinda hard when you're lying here dying. You don't exactly choose the position you land in. Legs might be sl splayed out, your arm might be in a stupid posture. God, this sucks. I... I take a second to look around, try to comprehend so many damn colors everywhere. But I did it. On the other side of this, I'm the only one that had to die, so you know what? Mission accomplished. That's what a... would do, right? One of the words is lost. It's it's hard to wrap my mind around, but I think I did a good job. Someone's crying nearby. <laughs> Damn it. I'm I'm the one who wants to cry. <sighs> Look at me now. I I feel the cold presence of something or someone standing over me. Look down and mutter something. Oh, kind of sad. Lame of a not be able to protect themselves. Another one of those words is lost again. <laughs> what was it again? Ugh, whatever. At least I'll be gone soon and I won't have to deal with this anymore. Someone nearby says something. They're talking rather heatedly, but I'm... I'm holding on. You know it won't be him, right? Well, if it's him, because it's him, we'll be able to survive that. Even this. The same figure stands over me, and I feel something pressed to my skin. It's gentle, but enveloping. I feel parts of myself begin to entwine. All this self lost amidst the fog. I, I kind of wish I could stand up at this point. Let him know at least something, like... At the end of it, it was nice working with your partner. And with that... Man, Jay, it's the first sentence of Indigo and I'm already crying, gamers. <laughs> I'm already crying, gamers! Oh no! Yes, oh yes. no! <laughs> Can't oh, no. yourself! <laughs> Nobody gets to cry but me here. I'm the- I did this- this is my yep. fault! <laughs> This is all my fault! <laughs> Cassius, can you see yourself, first of all? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, your eyes snap open, and you find yourself completely paralyzed, lying in bed, no power left in your body. You, you don't remember what was happening last, but you get this feeling. It rises in the back of your throat. This... This is the first time I've woken up, you think. And that thought doesn't sit well with you, because you remember the outlines of hundreds of wakings before. You remember the vague impression of a thousand days lived, but none of the shape. And you lie there, your body too weak to move. And you hear from the other side of an apartment that you can imagine in your head but can't see. Something's shifting around. And something moves into the room. It peeks its head in and you see an elongated mask that looks that of some sort of 
deer? Um, it looks at you, sees that your eyes are open. My eyes? Place, <laughs> place, yeah, sorry. <laughs> God, yeah. Single eye. Yeah, Another yeah, one open. One now. <laughs> it's really difficult. Um, the person sees you, makes lone eye contact, and you hear more, the sounds of more disruption on the apartment, and they, they slowly raise a finger to their mask as if shushing you. Slowly move over, put down a flower on top of the de uh, on top of the dresser, and then move back out into your apartment. And Cassius, you you watch him go, and um, you blink. You're the one eye that would open, and you watch as that flower goes from a state of sort of like vibrancy amidst the darkness to just. It begins to fade, and then in the next moment, it seems to be dead. And with every blink, another another stage of this flower's life cycle accelerates past your eyes, and you're not quite sure how much time passes, but eventually, you feel a twinge start in one of your fingers, and it moves its way to your elbow, and finally up your arm, and eventually, you regain the ability to move. And you are now free to explore the apartment. <laughs> Can I turn the fucking lights on? <laughs> yeah, actually. So you uh, first things first, you're gonna you're gonna flick the lights on in this room. Yeah, where's the light switch? Like over here? Yeah, you take a look for the light switch and you you flick it a few times and nothing really happens. Maybe there's like a power outage or something, but the lighting of this apartment hasn't shifted in a in a while. So maybe the power's been out for a while. Well, I've been looking at this flower for a long ass time. So I'm gonna look yep. at it again. You look at the flower. It's actually one of a bundle. Um, apparently, multiple people have visited you, and you look at it and pick it up in your hand, and it almost seems to turn to dust before your eyes. Like it. This is a this is a long abandoned piece of like ivy that you might find dried out after a uh, after a verdant summer. This shit's been here a while. At least a season, if you say summer. Yup. <laughs> little gamers. <laughs> All right, I'll walk out into the living room. You go out into the living room and your TV is still on despite the power outage. You got one of them new RNA and things that'll run despite. Like, okay, so normally you need to be connected to the grid, right? But this new RNA in television will run pretty much anywhere. The only thing you got to worry about is <laughs> RNA and Echo, but you don't have an issue. There's been a sale over Indigo for, like, years. And as you as you start to piece this shit together, you, you remember these facts, but, like, they feel like they were loaned to you from someone else. Like, you remember, yeah, I'm... Fuck, I'm in the city of Indigo. Um, yeah, I, I bought this TV. Huh. I want to get the papers. You look at the piece of paper. It appears to be a clipboard for taking notes. All of the... You notice a slight tear across, like, the top, the little clippy bit? Yeah. It appears that someone ripped something out from here in a hurry. But otherwise, all the other pages are blank. Okay, and these? Uh, those? You look down at a crate of VHS tapes. They've, one after the other, you can see that they've been, like, tried and discarded from the TV, and your, your brain, your brain starts to take in the scene, and you look at the, you look at the big pile of tapes, and you go, okay, well, huh. It seems like a lot of these tapes are piled up so that it half fills the box. And based on the layer of dust on these tapes over here, it seems like I used to have more in the box and I used the side table as storage. So, concluding, half these tapes are missing and it hits you like a flash. You're pretty good at this investigation thing. <laughs> like, it just sort of comes naturally to you. Your, your brain's able to piece together disparate sort of pieces and create, draw a consistent conclusion. That 
It seems important to you. You move past as the static on the TV blares. What is this? There's a pin. <laughs> uh, are you taking? Okay, you take a look at your grocery list. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see the classics. Uh, a request for like meat, eggs, written very small. Almost invisibly, as if the person writing this was ashamed. Juice boxes. <laughs> you like a the juice box. <laughs> what are these books? Um, those books. Uh, you begin to look through, and a few of them have sort of tipped over. Um, they're mostly guides related to Indigo, the surrounding area. Um weird reference material for somebody who lived here to have. But, yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary. What is this on the wall? Ooh, that is a picture. It's kind of a common one. It's, um, it's of Seaside, the, uh, the developed area of Indigo. You see the, you see the garish casino there. It's, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're used to the site. Yeah, you're you're used to this. You've you've seen this one before. That that's clicking. I have opinions about there. this. I have opinions yeah. about this place, and I don't remember having opinions yeah. about this place. Yeah, you start to feel actually a little mad, and you're like, hmm, wonder why. <laughs> How's the like? Okay, hold on. I look in the fridge. How's uh, the like food in there looking? Awful. Yeah, that's what I thought. Except. The juice boxes. <laughs> <laughs> juice boxes are good. Yeah, you're pretty sure those don't go bad. I'll take the juice box. Okay, you take you take five juice boxes. It, they come in, in a set of six. I put them in my coat. Yep. <laughs> These are for me. Yep. You also notice, and this is another fun detail, the fridge still seems to be running. Um... Despite the power being out, this appears to be another another one of those RNA and contraptions that can run just by being in proximity to a sale. Uh, it's it's still working. Food's still bad though. You shouldn't eat it. <laughs> okay. How? What is the light on the table? You you look up and it seems to be some sort of nightlight or emergency power. Something to cast illumination around the room. It's pretty weak. Mm. I'm assuming this is, like, my trash can. Yeah. It's it's completely empty. Like, worryingly so. You're pretty sure you didn't keep it that clean. Do I keep my apart- like, Is this too clean for my apartment? Yes. Absolutely. Your deduction picks up and you're like, yeah, this is way the fuck too clean. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm sure. no, it's definitely too clean. Yeah. <laughs> the bathroom light still works. Yep. You walk into the bathroom and your brain, you you first pick up like, yeah, the light's still on in here, and you you look up at it, and it's one of them RNA and lights, but that's not what God, you're looking at. God, every time he thinks the word RNA and he gets angry and he. <laughs> Every time the word RNA and goes through his brain, he gets so upset and doesn't understand <laughs> why. You you look across and you you see yourself in the mirror. You're pretty sure it's yourself, and all of it looks wrong. Like you don't you don't remember this. It's it's right, but not it. It it's feels you, like, but not what you remember. But you don't exactly. remember what you remember. Exactly. You remember sort of the shape that your face is supposed to be, and yeah, it's the same shape, but the features are wrong. Everything's different. There's this tight cloth bound around your neck. Um, it's you. You. You sort of feeling feel a rising sense of almost revulsion and confusion. And it's too clean in here? And it's too clean in here. There's definitely, like, 
just like looking in the mirror, like touching his face moments of like, mm, is this like, me? It's like, okay, touch this cheek. So this is me, but it's not me. Yes. That, that feeling course. Yeah, that feeling courses throughout your entire body, but it feels like parts of your mind are working to sort of pick up the slack here and they go like, oh, no, yeah, this is this is me. Um, it almost feels like you're more used to seeing yourself in the third person than the first, which is a horrifying sensation that goes away after a few seconds of looking at yourself. I think he takes a couple minutes to just kind of, like, get used to the, like, this is what I look like, yep. I think. <laughs> Understandable. There's definitely several minutes of, like, messing with his hair, touching his, like, eye that won't open properly, touching yeah. his, like, throat, <sighs> looking at, like, his shirt, looking at his clothes, in the light, because yeah. this is the only room with light. <clears throat> yeah, you, you start to feel, you start to feel a little strange, and you realize, like, ugh. I, I should really get out of here. Like, you don't know who you need to see, but you, you shouldn't be here. Um, Are his clothes clean? They're cl yeah, yeah, actually. Um, which is like weird. There's no blood or dirt. There's no blood. The clothes are beaten. Normal amount of blood. <laughs> yeah, the clothes are beaten up but cleaned. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's... That does not seem right in his no. brain. He's like, these should be... There should be stuff on my clothes. You super feel that way. <laughs> his only conclusion is that someone must have changed his clothes for him. Yep. You you feel pretty confident about that. Which is uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> I cannot leave this room. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I was hit just slamming into a wall. <laughs> Getting used to having one eye is hard. <laughs> the depth perception, dude. <laughs> I opened this closet. You look at the closet and yeah, there's there's a few like coats, raincoats in here, but like that old that old like investigative brain picks up again and you go like, hold on. Everyone, every single person out there owns at least one notable piece of clothing. Like, a, a bad sweater you've got a story about, a pair of pants that's just a little too awful. Everyone's got something like that in their house, and you look in here and it's like... It's normal clothes. Almost, like, worryingly normal. Completely mundane. 100%. I look at the door... And you know, right before you leave the house, you always pat yourself down to make sure you have everything. He does yes. that. Just on instinct. Like, he doesn't know why he's patting certain parts of, like, his coat oh, and nice. stuff. But he's he does it, like, almost, like, muscle memory. You, Do I you have, go... like, my wallet or my phone or Very, keys? very smart. Okay, so you pat down your entire body and you feel for things that should be there just subconsciously. And... You, you touch one pocket, and it, it, it compresses under your palm. You touch another, that compresses, and alas, and that compresses, and you go, Oh, I'm missing three very important things. Um, my wallet, my keys. My, my wallet, phone. my phone, and my keys. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you, I turn you, around in a start, and then I get, like, it's like that thing of like, Oh, shit, I need to go grab that. Turns around. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where is it? <laughs> yep <laughs> you oh boy yeah no you're missing that and you can you can feel their absence and it sucks <laughs> i guess he'll do like a cursory look like are they over here you know like like you would because yep. he can tell like this is my house yes this I'll, is where i live yeah I'll quickly answer that you you scan the entire apartment. You like go into your closet and check all the pants and stuff in here. I can't go into um, room either. Like you <laughs> you look through you look through everything in your room and you can't find shit. Um, and you wind up more or less back where you started, just looking at the door. <laughs> okay, well I guess I can't. Yeah, I was trying, but it was just like, it's like a very precise angle you gotta hit. But... Classic Cassius skip, you've gotta glitch through the doorway. 
can I look on? Well, okay. When I walk out the door, I'm gonna pee, I'm crack it open. Yeah. Is there like a mat out front? There isn't a mat in front of your apartment, no. Um, and based okay. on the dirt you see around the door, you assume you didn't really have one. Um, you used this area to sort of take off your shoes. Uh, and this was like, this was your little like welcome mud room. Okay. Um, I'm gonna reach my hand and touch the like top of the door frame to see if I like hit any Ooh. keys or anything up there. Good guess. Nothing up there. Okay. It's just he's like, I don't want to like walk out of here without yeah. a way back in. <laughs> like, if that makes sense. <laughs> but I, I will walk into the hallway. Like, he's like, okay. I just guess I won't lock the door. Was it locked? Okay. Was it locked when he tried to open it? Like, from the inside? Yes, actually. Your door was indeed locked from the inside. And does it taking look a look. Like at... it, does it look like it locks look... automatically? No. It definitely does not. It's one of the it's one of the old-fashioned types, and taking a look at the front doorknob, there is a place to insert a key, so theoretically someone with your keys could lock you in. <laughs> he's, he's Cassius, so this is a problem for him. He's like, man, I do not want to get locked out of this place. I don't I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get locked out of the one place that I have any idea where I am. Yep, this is one of the few places that feels familiar to you. You know what he will do, though? What's that? He's gonna come over here and get one of these indigo guides. <laughs> You get, yeah, you grab the guide to the city. <laughs> and Cassius, you begin to thumb through it, and it's, it's very informational, actually. It even has cute cartoons. <laughs> Puts that in his coat with the juice boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love him. <laughs> okay, are you heading out into your apartment building? Yeah, I will. I kind of, I think he might, like not actually fully close the door, I guess. Because it's Smart. not like it'll be locked anyway. Like, <laughs> Yeah, do you put something like in the way, like a book or something? Probably. Cool, okay. You, you put a book in the way and you, you move out into the apartment. And, let me drop you over there. So and you don't remember... Assume, this is your apartment this is building. House. This is your this is your place. The light from the bathroom is sort of leaking out from under the door, um, which you have braced open. Uh, and yeah, you 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 look around. You don't remember it being quite this dark. What is this? That's a lantern. It it's a it's something that you just use to light up the hallway. And holy shit, does your apartment need it? Look at how dark this place is. Is there a key under it? <laughs> you take a look, no key. <laughs> Dang, he's like, he's like, you would figure there'd be a spare key, but yeah. I guess I'm just boned. <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, I don't know if I kept a spare key or if that's just something that I'm thinking that people do, <laughs> but it's definitely not here. <laughs> yeah, you, you look in all the usual spots and yeah, confirmed nothing. It's... And you're sure you would have hidden something in one of those spots. I guess his conclusion is somebody else who knew about it took it. Oh, good conclusion. Like, somebody he knew took it. Good, good, good conclusion. Because <laughs> he's like, if I don't have it, somebody else must have known where it was. Yeah. Somebody that I would have had to tell, right? And as you start to run through your mind the list of suspects, you freeze. Who, who would I have told? You don't, you don't know anyone in this city. Not, yeah, you, you don't know anyone here. You, you're sure you had friends. You're sure you knew people, but their faces are slipping through your fingers, just sort of like your own did. And that feeling is not good. <laughs> like trying to hold sand with an open palm. <laughs> like, yep. like, uh... <laughs> All you know is it's probably a good idea to get out of here. Maybe you could find someone. 
is this like somebody's house? That's somebody else's apartment, you think. Um, and you move past and, oh, you, huh, this door seems like a little bit open. I will knock. <laughs> you knock and it slowly creeps open. And I'm going to put you a little bit through the wall to show you what you see. There's there's a room in there, and it's flanked on either side by two beautiful paintings, and on the far side is a thick curtain. Hello? Nothing. Oh, boy. Okay, I will part the curtain. You part the curtain and look through, and you see a bunch of papers scattered across the ground. Oh, God. I'm gonna, like, kind of make my way around. You slowly creep your way through the room, the crinkling of papers under your feet. It, The air is sort of moldy and oppressive in here. And you make it to the other wall, and... Oh, wow, um... Someone apparently went through here in a hurry. If your apartment was meticulously gone over, this place was a rush job. Dozens and dozens of books are scattered across the ground, and you really can't... <laughs> you can barely see the floor under all this paper. Do they look familiar? Like, I picked one up. You start to piece through the... These are, like, records? Huh. Like, records of who lives here and stuff? You're... You think? It mostly is names and a bunch of numbers. Um. Yeah, no, that's... Certain... Certain amounts of gold, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Gold sounds right. Um... And you, these are like accounting papers, like, oh, yeah, okay, flip over another one. These are tax forms. This is like where they keep the information on like. It's rain. who paid, who paid and for what. Um, this is, this is a weird thing because Indigo's taxation rate is pretty harsh for the citizens and next to non-existent for the merchants, so you're pretty sure you're standing on, like, a census for the city. And it was very obviously quickly... Oh, like, extremely quickly pieced through. This is super illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> this... His first thought is, this is not... This is... Somebody's gonna get arrested and hopefully <laughs> it's not me. Oh, um, I'll give I'll give you something since you walked over here. Okay. You look up at that painting on the wall, and it's almost the same landscape that you remember seeing in your own apartment. Apparently, this is like something free that they give out with the apartment building. Like they mass produce these to just make the walls look nice. But looking at this wall, you see the outline of another painting, like like an imprint in the dust. For something that was there once, but is now missing. And that that catches your eye, actually. Because the rest of the room seems to be so clamorously just ripped apart. But it seems like one of these paintings was very deliberately taken. Is this just... I think his first instinct is... Is this room made such a mess to cover up something specific? Good question. Um, you, you kind of wonder about that, and I don't, I don't know if you necessarily have the means, the time, or the light to confirm that, because yeah, that like would require... Yeah, like, I feel like this might be, like, a, there's such an obvious mess here to cover up the missing, like, small missing things that people won't notice because of the massive mess. Excellent. So... What we're going to do here right now is, this is what, what I'm going to call a pinned task. Now, currently, you don't have the time to piece through all these papers, but there will be a lot of downtime, considering we all... Yeah, considering there's going to be a little bit of a jump in time, you can basically say, okay, right here, I'm going to pin an event. Cassius is going to piece through all of this and work on my conclusion, and it, when time advances, that task will be done. So... You're just taking a mental note that you'll come back to this. And we'll discuss that when time advances. You can't logistically do it right now, but you're going to come back to this. Okay. He's going to leave. 
Okay, I'll drop you outside. I, th I think his hope was that there would be someone in here, and there wasn't. <laughs> so he's like, fuck. <laughs> he will leave the door slightly open, though. Like it Smart. was when he found it. <laughs> and anything he touched in there, he put exactly back where he found it. Just because he felt like that's what he was supposed to do. Okay, okay. he's going to come knock on this door. You knock, and there's no response from the other side of the door. Oh, yeah, but that's right, of course. Nobody lives on this floor with you. That It's always been like that. Um, only two people live in this apartment building, actually. Uh, huh. Yeah, nobody's in here. Okay, he'll... If he remembers only two people live in this apartment building, he's just gonna follow that and go to okay. where he thinks the other person would be. Okay, you go downstairs, then. And you you walk down those those rickety old stairs and you look and this door too is slightly ajar and yeah, no, you recognize this apartment. This one's familiar. This apartment is familiar. This apartment's familiar. It's not directly below your own, but you share a lot of the same like floor ceiling space. Okay. Is this the one that I vaguely remember someone being in? Yeah, you remember pretty strongly somebody lived here. And the door's slightly open. The door's slightly open. I'm going to knock. Politely. You knock and... Like, you knock pretty quietly and just under the force of your knocks, the... It... Screaks open just a little bit more. He's gonna call out and be like, hello? Nothing. He's gonna walk in like a criminal. Okay, you go in like a criminal and not like an actual up. criminal. He's walking yeah. in like a person. But <laughs> you you start to you start to look around the apartment. Your eyes scanning everything in the room, and a weird feeling of nostalgia washes over you. It almost contradicts something else that you felt earlier, especially based on where you woke up. Huh? This is my apartment. I I live here. But wait, hold on. <laughs> you hold you on. sort of your head feels heavy for a second. I no, I live upstairs. That that's my apartment. I with my TV and my juice boxes and all that. That that's my apartment. And why do I have such a clear memory of this place and Yeah, it this place feels very nostalgic and fuck, you borderline remember buying this big stupid wall ornament. You had a hell of a time hanging it up, but, like, yeah, you did it. I guess his first conclusion is maybe he's friends with the person who's here, who lives mm. here. Oh. Because he here's his conclusion, right? He woke up in one of the two places, and it wasn't this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Very, oh, fuck, very astute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you quickly quiet those feelings, and you, you start to... Like, look around. <laughs> what is this? Is this a painting? Ooh. Yeah, that's another one of those annoying, like, you always meant to replace this one, or fuck, your friend always meant to replace this one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those just annoying, like, came with the place paintings, you know, landscapes and crap. That one on the far side is of an RNA and train speeding past, and you get irrationally mad again. <laughs> Okay, stop. Okay. <laughs> as as you walk towards this uh, this rug specifically, you 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 remember this rug and you you remember your old reading nook around the corner and you can feel the presence of someone on the other side of it. Um but I'm going to need really quickly a roll to die from you. So in order to do this Roma, you click on your character and click die. Yep. <laughs> I saw that earlier. And I'm kind of a oh! gamer god. Holy <laughs> fuck! Look. Cassius, he, Jesus he's Christ. He's fucking ready, dude. He feels that and he's like, uh-uh. Yeah, uh -uh. you feel that presence on the far side of the bookshelf and you're like, nope! <laughs> You, you, you sense that something is over there, fuck. Like, you, you peek around for a second, and you almost start to see the start of it, and then every instinct says, no, fuck, run. 
and you turn around, and the next second you're outside the apartment. Okay. If his instincts say run, then he will run. You you get out of there as quickly as possible. You don't know who or what was in there, but fuck, if, like something inside of you told you to move, and you listened. <sighs> close that door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. <laughs> I'm close that one. I'll figure yeah. that one out later. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to this one. Cassius puts a pin in this one. Fuck that shit. You get outside. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. I um, love that the one that was the max is the blue one. That yeah. Makes that makes sense oh, right now. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I love it when rolls work out actually perfectly. Okay. Also, so like, a secondary, he did call out and nothing responded. Nothing responded. And the fact that there was definitely something there, mm -hmm. he's like, either it can't respond or it didn't want to. And yes. neither of those answers are great. <laughs> no. <laughs> neither one of those is ideal. <laughs> No, not even a little bit. <laughs> All right. There's light over here, so I'm gonna move yep. towards that. You uh, you move towards the light, and yeah, you're pretty sure this is one of the this is one of the abandoned rooms again. Why is it lit up then? Yeah, you don't know. I knock on the door. <laughs> You you knock on the door and there's absolutely no answer and after a few seconds, click, light goes off. That's suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's suspicious, but can't do anything about it. <laughs> like, like, what's he supposed to do? Break the door down? No. He's yeah, exactly. Fucking... His manners. <laughs> Cassius is a good mannered boy. Okay. You, he thinks so. <laughs> you walk down the stairs and find yourself on the ground floor. Alright. Is there... It just goes outside, right? Yep. You can see daylight to your left. You're not actually sure what time of day it is. I'm gonna go to the end of this hallway just to make sure. Down here there seems to be some sort of administrative office. Like, this is... This is the place that you remember signing the deed for your apartment. Um, it's it's probably locked, but it might be worth giving lock a shot. And try the handle. It seems like a more publicly open thing. So yeah, the door shockingly opens, and do you go inside? You can. I'll, I'll give you. I a will peek. open the door. Yeah, there is Does a. Does it peek. seem like there's people in here? Absolutely not. Just a bunch of piled up boxes. All right, that doesn't matter to me then. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go outside. Okay. Cassius, you walk outside, having left your creepy ass apartment building. Let me get something ready really quick. Okay. And let's jump you over there. I have a question. Fantastic. Is it yeah. daytime? It is. It is. Were all of my windows, were they like, do I not have any windows? Um, you or did, actually, all, so... Were they all, like, blinds down? You, uh, they were, they were blinds up, actually, for a few of them. It seems to be this, this hanging twilight. Like, if you had to guess, it's probably, like, 5, 6 a.m., and as you walk out of your apartment building, the sky actually lights up a bit, and you, um, you start to, like, your eyes start to adjust as, as, like, sun starts to pour in, and, um... You, is this normal? You, yeah, that's that's normal. Yeah, like you look around, you're you're recognizing this. And... Oh fuck! Like you you recognize all of this. Um, you recognize a little too much of this. Like you feel like the world is too perfect. <laughs> like it's weird. But normally, when when somebody looks at a thing, they they miss details. They overlook stuff. And fuck, you're you're seeing it all at once. You see a vibrant shift of color dancing in front of your eyes, and it's actually really overwhelming. Um, yeah, it's like all of his senses are picking up one hundred percent of everything. And yes, like, I can't. Whoa, whoa! You feel you feel electricity fly through your brain from your one good eye, and 
Oh, crap, it burns. Um, you you try to hang on amidst the pain, and like you you watch as the world sort of starts to starts to dance around you. Um, was fuck. Uh, was it was it always quite like this? You you try to you try to struggle against it, but ugh, can you give me another roll to die? Ooh, okay, hold on. Let me do some quick math. Okay. Fucking barely, Cassius. Nice work. <clears throat> Cassius! I feel like he definitely does that thing of, like, kind of, like, almost du almost doubles over and is, like, kind of slightly bending and has, like, an eye covered. With, like, he's, like yeah. covers his eye with his hand for a second and then, like, kind of, like, squints it open. You feel like a tide of the static pouring through your brain, and... Admittedly, it fries about half of it in an instant. No living creature could withstand this much information. So your brain struggles, tries, and perishes as part of the process. But something in you hangs on. And you almost fall to your knees, but you, you stand up. And you're okay. In fact, your last, your final three intrepid brain cells hang on with fucking everything they've got. And you know what? They process that information and they turn it into something useful. And the world is engulfed in static, sure, but you shape it and make it your own. And you touch your face, that face that seemed unfamiliar to you, Looking in the mirror, and it's sure as hell is making an unfamiliar expression. You're looking at this line, you're looking at this static, and you're smiling. You just unlocked your gift, Ribbon of Fate. <laughs> can, I, can I roll it? How do I roll it? Uh, you, it's already been rolled for you. That is exactly what just happened. Nice. <laughs> and All guess right. what? You succeeded. I see it. And the ribbon hangs in front of you and connects you to somewhere. <laughs> I think that he doesn't quite understand what's happening, but hes it's like the only path forward. So yep. he's just going to start sprinting. You feel a sense of familiarity following this, this single red ribbon and you watch as it dances amidst the static and you follow it deeper into the city. fucking hype as hell good roll <laughs> and as you move it begins to rain you're you're used to seeing indigo like this it's it's a pretty rainy misty city after all but it it seems to fall extra extra thick today and everyone who should be up and about around this time stays inside a thin layer of fog rises up from the canals, and you you move further and further into the city, finally stopping at a an area that seems mistier than all the others. The line leads straight inside, and you choose to follow it. And you, <laughs> and you find yourself sitting in a shop. Pitch dark. This early in the morning, somebody's sitting here without any goddamn lights on. You leave the door open, same as your apartment, just to provide yourself that little, little bit of illumination, and you stare across, and you feel eyes appraising you from somewhere in the darkness. It's definitely, like, walks in, like, sweating. Yeah. Like, panting. Like... <laughs> And oh, you, gosh, you, you look so scary here. <laughs> you feel tension begin to rise as as these eyes peer through you. This is the first person you've this is the first person you've seen, and you feel them looking straight at you. And in the darkness, you feel completely seen for a moment, and then, in a flash. Lightning illuminates the room. You see a rather diminutive woman. And then it fades. <laughs> and her eyes continue to watch you from the dark. <laughs> I think what would normally be fear is 
relief. Like, <laughs> it's like he's not seen another person. <laughs> and also, no one else has seen him. <laughs> and so he's like, oh my god, <laughs> there's somebody here. <laughs> <laughs> You hear you hear a voice sort of split the darkness. Oh, you're out awfully late. It's late. Yes, um it's Do you know what time it is? Check's watch. Oh, darn it. I appear to have stayed up all night again. She slowly rises like a puppet on strings, plopping down. So, what brings you here? Uh, you uh, feel drawn to this over here. That, he points. Ah, <laughs> uh, the dragon with tire. Understandable. Its mysteries confound even me. Is it the tire I'm looking for? Or no, <laughs> it's that thing. <laughs> He's like, uh, no, no. Walks around and comes over for this little tiny thing. You feel a connection to this, to this object, and you reach down and you pick it up, and something that you've been holding back this entire time seems to, seems to well up to the surface. You, you run your fingers over something familiar. It's, it's a badge, and something flares up in the back of your mind, a voice. <laughs> wow, we both got them at the same time, huh? Weird. Both of us? <laughs> Cops? Really? Oh well, whatever it takes to help the city, I guess. Corruption or not, people listen to people with a badge. I I don't want to wind up like them, right? You need, like, promise me you won't either. I watch my back. <laughs> I, I, oh. <laughs> he rubs his head. Bad with words and important emotional moments. I, what I'm trying to say is, you watch my back, I watch yours, okay? He pins the badge on his chest, and you pin yours on yours. Counting on your partner, okay? And in a moment, you feel an emotion build. Your one good eye begins to cry. You can't quite keep it back. The face of someone you can't quite put together slipping between your fingers once again. And Cassius, you, you look at that badge and the back of it is coated in a metallic red substance and the front of it appears to have a slash mark driven straight through it. And you've managed to keep it together all this time. You have done so well to make it this far. But in this moment, you feel truly, completely vulnerable and... You clutch that badge to your chest like it's the most precious goddamn thing in the universe. I turn away from the lady who's looking at me. <laughs> I, turn, I, turn, I turn away. <laughs> he starts crying and he like sees her kind of like approaching and he's like She's turns hovering. around. <laughs> turns around. And with that, Cassius, we are going to jump ahead. Almost a year and a half after that a first night half? you woke up. Yup. Wait, that, he was six that, months? He that, was asleep? Mm-hmm. <laughs> six months he was asleep? Good deduction. I write this down yes. in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and now... We can he was officially for half a year. We can oh officially begin the game. <laughs> so let's let's jump over here. Oh yeah, we can see my memes. <laughs> my <Yep>. memes. <laughs> so something about this campaign, it is literally so large that it requires actual real ass loading screens. <laughs> Uh, Mask has thankfully uh, supplied us with this this walking gif of a creature that I'm sure will bear no significance on the campaign as a whole. And uh, 
any fan art that's provided will be put in in these screens. Right now, we've got art from Roma and art from Middle, and uh, we will hopefully get more over the course of the campaign. But yeah, this is so fucking big, we gotta do this! Um, and uh, yeah, speaking of which, I need to go find a, a much later map. If you need to decompress for five seconds, I do not blame you. The last hour have been exceptionally heavy. <laughs> Nah, bruh, it's something of, it's heavy for nobody but me. Like, I'm the only one that really, truly understands what any of that means, and I'm just I'm like, so oh, great. I'm so sorry. Oh, great, this is fantastic. I'm just fucking mad, I guess. Oh, you wait. did so oh, wait. good, holy shit. Okay. Oh, wait, too late on that one, gamers. <laughs> so, we're gonna jump over. Let's, yeah, let's, let's start here. So. Let's start on Hull Street. The city of Indigo, roughly population of 50,000 people who aren't commuters, traders, etc. It's It's been a staple of Windrosy life as sort of one of the few saltwater ports that functions as, as this gateway to the rest of the world. It's common for the Rao Jin to trade in Indigo. It's common for the Gylardians to come down from the north. This is their staging ground for their entire fleet. This city, to a certain extent, is is the lifeline and the connection of Windrose to the rest of the world. If Bluebell is the bridge to the future, Indigo is the bridge to the present. And you are a lucky resident of this city. Now, it hasn't all been good. Two years ago, a certain incident caused a, uh, a change in the local government, let's just say. The former ruling faction, a, a mayor backed by noble blood, and his police force were were ousted, removed by a combination of Aranea, Gylardia, Lancia even a little bit, after a an unsuccessful coup was apparently staged by the mayor to make Indigo something of a independent nation. You're now in the you're now in the recovery period. Didn't work out for them. You, uh, you feel, <laughs> you feel like this city is going through a strange period of withdrawals as, as Aranea stepped in, establishing a sort of militaristic rule. Lancia brought in their, <laughs> Lancia brought in sure their own forces. <laughs> Cassius hates Aranea. He hates them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you feel like, um, <laughs> you feel you feel privileged to live in this place, I guess. But yes, currently the uh, the city itself is split between a few factional powers: the Gylardians on the docks, the uh, <laughs> the Aranaeans and their mercenaries, a group named the Calamity Tempest, and a former group of monster hunters who have become the interim police force known as the Tide's Edge. These different factions have sort of set down roots within the city and try to try to rule things as best they can. However, that doesn't necessarily make things the best they can be for the people, as you've figured out personally. Now, that part of the story isn't very important. What's important right now is that a one arch is leaving a a kind of trashy fast food place nicknamed the netherworld with a uh with an almost stark white bag that's turning borderline translucent she's I, purchased... I was wondering why she was coming out of there and <laughs> obviously not here <laughs> <laughs> she's She's purchased the usual, uh, a hamburger that you gotta eat before it turns, before it bursts through the bag with a side of horrific pizza juice to sort of wash it down. It's, it's fast food. It is a sin. But, um, it's her lunch. She walks out, eyes straining against the light, and begins to walk down Hull Street, one of the bustling hubs of Indigo. You've gotten used to it. To the left is, uh, <laughs> to the left is the Grapevine, a, uh, a local newspaper that's trying to, trying its damnedest amidst factional pressures. And she travels. Grapevine? Cries. Yeah, grapevine. <laughs> Cries. <laughs> uh, 
and she travels to Shrine Street, a place that a one Cassius calls his home. She walks slowly. Is to see me, little <laughs> old me. <laughs> she walks rather slowly, trying to stay away from the sun whenever possible. Her eyes don't seem to adjust too keenly to the light. And um, she she walks, looks around, and someone... Thunk! Lands immediately in front of her, completely immobile. Oh, Cassius, oh my god. She runs forward. You got my balloon! <laughs> the girl the girl reaches up. Clutched in Cassius's hand is a balloon that he pulled from the tree. <laughs> she she gratefully takes it and scoots off. Thank you so much! He waves politely. <laughs> Arch pulls Cassius to his feet. Oh hey, Arch. boy. <laughs> Please don't scare me like that. <laughs> I didn't mean to fall out right in front of you. That was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She looks around. Oh. <laughs> I don't need to worry about Shrine Street being in bad shape because you're here. But at the same time, I need to worry about you doing things in Shrine Street. Oh, hold on. She reaches down and pulls something from the uh, nearly translucent bag. Lunch. Oh, nice. Thanks. Uh, you two begin to walk in a in, in a direction that uh, you're both pretty familiar with. Um, you walk down the the far side of Shrine Street, sort of past an abandoned area, and I'll jump you right over there because this city is full size. <laughs> it's a whole fucking city. Yeah, it's a whole goddamn city. You um. You walk, you start to walk down, like, chat pleasantly. Your your street, Shrine Street, is mostly inhabited by the elderly. A uh, few young kids about. It's not exactly a bustling hub of business or anything. So most of the trouble doesn't involve the Tempest or Tide's Edge or Aranea, God. It's, it's mostly just normal people troubles. Somebody's cat gets lost. I don't know. If... <laughs> Somebody loses their dentures. Somebody needs you to deliver them food. You manage to handle all of that and sort of make a name for yourself. You, uh... Ah, yes, Cassius, I've got to point out this this building over to your left. Um, you, you, look down a, you look down an alleyway across from this sort of overgrown area. There's an overgrown district immediately to your right, but... You look down this alleyway and you start to remember exactly what happened in here. An incident in a forgotten house with a ghoul. You look back on oh, it fondly. Oh, that close to my house, huh? Great. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a street away. It's fine. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something really quick. Uh, let me let me jump back to Shrine, Shrine Street. This is the Potato Detective's office. Oh, it's immediately in front of my house. Yeah, it's it's across the street from you. There's a short. Why distance. does it touch sleep in my? <laughs> <laughs> Cassius, <Dad>, Weebus. <laughs> Cassius, Cassius begins to turn over things in his brain as he walks. <laughs> um, I live right here. He does <laughs> not need to be taking the train every day. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the intern? Yeah, uh, it's everyone's out of town right now because they're helping him because he just got an apartment in the city. Wait. GM, did he get an apartment here? Because nobody else lives here. No, he didn't get an apartment okay, in your building because uh, you're, you've are you told stories about your building and he didn't want to live there. <laughs> no, I was going to Your say, building's scary, not. dude. I was about to say he better not be living there. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, everyone, all the other detectives are out helping him get his stuff from his house. I cannot believe he's been riding the train from Windrose <laughs> every day. It's quite a distance cowboy cr cowboy country is actually uh i think trains run rather irregularly from there you would have to get up extremely early to i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> and like we were giving him so much shit for a while <laughs> about falling asleep at work and he didn't even say anything he didn't even defend himself we were just teasing him for being tired because <laughs> 
because he was coming to work, he woke up at like 2 a.m. every morning. Understandable. 2 a.m. is my prime time, so that's when I try to stay open. Yeah, but, but he's like a human. Understandable as well. <laughs> <laughs> she nods and walks with you. <laughs> you go to your usual spot, a place that you've you've set up, sort of. It's like, weirdly, you and Arch have similar tastes in food. She really likes juice boxes, too, and also this trashy stuff. Um, and you both seem to have similar downtimes, like... Now it's probably like 2, 3 p.m. Logistically, when she should absolutely be open and helping customers. But no, she's out here eating because no, it's breakfast time. <laughs> ah, it's breakfast, huh? Yep. You eat this, this, this would give me a stomach ache. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the few things that actually calms my stomach down. The relative level tried... of... Have you tried, like, probiotics? <laughs> like, there's probiotic milk you can drink on. <laughs> I, Testudo Pharmaceuticals, do not agree with me, nor do RNA and... That's oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is one of the few things that, and I quote, can mellow me out. You have never seen Arch be unmellow. She is 24-7 yeah. mellow. She she begins to walk over and starts to, like, boost herself up on this box fort that you helped her make. <laughs> this is her box fort. Kid we pokes their head it. from around the corner. Hey. Uh, uh, hi. Hello. Uh, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to sit here and eat my lunch. No, you're not. This is mine. No, I disagree. This is mine. This is <laughs> Arch looks hers. down. <laughs> oh, the kid looks around and sees Cassius. Oh, you're with him. Okay. And that's that's cool. He, he can stay here. Oh, excellent. Then I shall sit as well. Not you. What? Oh. <laughs> Arch looks down. What? Why not? <laughs> I mean, like, you're cool, but... She's just, she's another adult, you know? I am an adult, yes. <laughs> Arch nods! <laughs> uh, yeah, I get it, I suppose. Like, you, you you play stuff with us. Like, like you taught me hopscotch. They point at the hopscotch. <laughs> Image of Cassius, one eye, one leg, doing like, <laughs> like doing the one leg jump in hopscotch. <laughs> like, falling on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so like yeah you can use you can use my box fort i disagree it's my box fort but she can't she smells i do not smell i put a lot she of effort into not, not. Smell. <laughs> also, uh, she did build this mm -hmm. so like you get to thank her for building it <laughs> so she's the one who made it exist and that's why you get to play on it can listen starts thinking oh like sort of senses like that you're you're taking your time with them okay only because you did it <laughs> scoots away and watches arch looks over at the kid i do not get along well with children hey you just gotta you just gotta treat them like equals ah uh, that would be difficult <laughs> like it's like it's like kids are so used to having their parents and teachers treat them like they're dumb if you just treat them like you're explaining it to you like you would anybody else then they it's like you know easier to talk to them because then they're like oh this guy isn't treating me like i'm stupid <laughs> arch slowly blinks hmm interesting consideration i hadn't thought of applying principles of diplomacy to communication with children you have to apply this to communication with everybody, Arch. <laughs> <laughs> she does the... She blinks again and does the slowly, like, ah. <laughs> Head tilt. <laughs> Regardless, I think you did a rather impressive job disarming the situation. You hesitate to call the si this situation a situation. You have dealt with punks with Molotov cocktails. Th getting a child to leave your box fort is not a situation. <laughs> well, it is because it matters to the kid. 
<laughs> Arch nods sagely. <laughs> like, I heard you were I heard you were becoming something of a local hero. I'm... It's weird to get called that. I just it's like everyone here is kind of like old or like a kid. So like, <laughs> like, like they need a lot of help with stuff, and it's just I help people with like <laughs> like you know the old ladies can't carry up seven bags of groceries up the stairs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> she she nods along with that. I but think... they're all like, wow. And it's like, I don't know. I guess <laughs> it started after like like like, you know, some of the older ladies need help more regularly, so I gave them my phone number. I'm like, here, if you need help, you can call me. And then it's like sometimes it's like, oh no, this old lady fell down at like 2 a.m. and can't get up. I gotta run over there and help her out, and then they <laughs> never get that stuff. They never forget. <laughs> to give away Old the best women. part of <laughs> to give away the best part of the day helping others. That I suppose is admirable. She she nods along with this. Uh I'm going to demonstrate one of this game's fun modules. This is a mini game called Empathy. This is a role that exists specifically within Indigo that's sort of an information gathering slash support technique. Um, in this case, Arch is going to try to empathize with you and your sort of reputation as a uh, as a local legend now. She's sort of impressed, but wants to get your take on how you genuinely feel about it. It seems like you're a little annoyed, but also like, yeah, she's trying to process that. So the way this works is Arch gets to roll a d20 plus a d6, and you get to roll to die right now. Uh, do I get to choose which stat it is? You, you get to, right now, you're rolling out all three of your colors. You will get to, you will get to choose what stat immediately afterwards. Okay. So, you roll to die, and the total was less than Arch's, basically, like, let's call it a diplomacy check, except in this case, it's an empathy check. So Arch can look at your colors and go, hmm, okay. I think I'm going to say that you can't react to my compliment with a, let's say, a yellow. <laughs> um, you cannot, since your attributes, your three attributes make up the totality of your character, you cannot react to this compliment in such a way that factors in what your yellow is about. So could you share with the audience what your yellow is? resourcefulness exactly so you can't be like well you know i'm good at finding stuff you know i'm a useful guy it it forces you into reacting with your red or with your blue something a little more uh like it lets it lets her sort of guide your reaction a bit while this is purely a friendly way of using it because she wants to see a different side of you there are more aggressive ways of using it where, say, a character's red stat is ultra-violence. You can be like, I'm gonna compliment you. You can't react to this with ultra-violence. <laughs> <laughs> so, now RP out your reaction to a certain extent. She's, like, complimenting him, and he does not necessarily take it well. <laughs> uh. He definitely, I feel, is, like, I just, I don't feel like I've done anything worth getting that kind of praise. Oh. <laughs> it's like everybody's blowing it up out of proportion, you know? <laughs> like, would you hope to, I guess, do something more for them? Or of like, course. Really? I mean, yeah. Like, like what? I guess anything, no one else is going to do it. Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> There's Further. nobody else is looking out for them. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> so did you react using one of the, like, one of your attributes, more or less, with the philosophy of one of your attributes to that, to that prompt? Yeah. Uh, she is going to guess that you reacted with your red attribute. I did not. Perfect. Uh, you know she, exactly which attribute I responded with. I babe. absolutely do. <laughs> she she nods along, not quite not quite understanding. 
She goes, okay, um, well, I hope, <laughs> I hope that they, uh, I hope that you can internalize some of the appreciation that they clearly have for you. It's not necessarily easy helping people. Um, most people don't want my help, I suppose. Why? Cassius thinks Arch is extremely <laughs> useful. <laughs> <laughs> she slowly begins to shrug. <laughs> People say I have some sort of an intimidating aura. You think back on the night you met her with the fucking eyes from the darkness? <laughs> Remembers that Cassius was relieved by that and not scared. <laughs> that, that was a sense of comfort for him and not they're, fear. They're both weirdos. Oh my god. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it. I just don't see it. <laughs> Now, for for fun's sake, I'm gonna say that you should try an empathy roll along with along with Arch, just just to play out the mechanic. All right. So it's you a can D twenty, and you can lock in since something happened to you. You can lock in a swing. You rolled to die after all, so you can take one of those colors. Oh, I will take blue. That is my okay. You know, that is the stat I would use for this. So click, keep blue. How do I how do I do that? It's at the very top. If you highlight your character, there is a keep blue button that will automatically do it for you. There you go. Rolling one? Uh, just just ignore that. That automatically totals your stats for you if you're too lazy to do the math. Okay. Now, now you can do a roll to die, and it'll automatically just do it for you. Okay, I just do roll to die. Exa all right, sorry, roll to do. Sorry, I, I apologize. Now you just roll to do to perform an empathy roll. And she physically cannot beat that. Let's still roll it out. Am I dyed blue right now? You are dyed blue right now. It, right, I, it should be it should be the blue Cassius. Um, it is. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is an outdated version of your pog. I will get you the new version for the next map. Um, okay. Let me roll her own. Okay. Cool. Uh, what are you banning from her reactions? You you don't know very much about Arch, but this will sort of help you narrow down her her different attributes. This I'll ban her red attribute. Fantastic. Okay. Um. So you've got a choice between blue and yellow, and uh, you more or less communicated that like Arch is pretty useful, and uh, she is and going. Not scary. Yes. <laughs> her. Her entire, she draws her hood up, sort of, and you see the, like, glow behind her eyes. I think there's a certain mystery when it comes to interacting with people who are not from Indigo or from Windrose. I, I don't want to call it necessarily xenophobia. I don't think it's that extreme, but they're far more likely to trust you than trust me. I'm someone strange and different and I don't know. I Born. Yeah, I don't think what I the service I provide to the city is necessarily very useful. Not that quite like what you're doing. Definitely not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Cassius who finds Arch's shop extremely useful. <laughs> She, she, like, she thinks on it. I think it might be because of the nature of my work. I'm a collector of curios, strange and foreign, I suppose. And how am I supposed to help an old lady get up at 2 a.m. with, I don't know, an eyeball on a stick? I mean, you have your hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're physically capable. It's just the thing of, you're... Not every single person needs that kind of thing, but there are people who do, and those people, it's extremely useful. Like, I I need it, and I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the stuff I do without it. She, she actually, like, like, you can notice her mood light up a little bit. What, what color do you think she was responding with there? Quick. Yellow? Yellow. Ha, 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 good guess. <laughs> You are 100% you know. correct. Okay, um, is her yellow... Can I guess what it is? Yes. Is it, like, a uh, foreigner or, like, strangeness or oh, something like that? Her, good guess. I, I'll reveal it to you because you successfully guessed her yellow stat. 
Arch's yellow stat is fragility. Fragility. It is a word I it don't is, know. It is specifically. It is specifically due to. It. It is. It is a stat related to the. The impermanence of things. It's something that you've noticed with her a lot, actually. And you are not shocked she had this reaction. So, for everyone, for every single person in chat who guessed that this was a dating sim, congratulations. <laughs> I was. I just want to tell everybody that I was right, and now me and Arch are best friends. <laughs> so, with discovering one of Arch's attributes, she only has a plus one in this stat, and you know she's she's hiding some other shit. You get the feeling this is probably the weakest of hers, but you know, you found out a little bit about her. I'll also reveal her class to you, and these will be available for your perusal on the World Anvil in the future itself. Her class is Peddler. It's focused mostly on selling things. It's very straightforward. She she grins at you. You know what? Thanks. Oh, right. Burgers are getting liquid. <laughs> Cassius, who has been like casually biting on the one she gave him the whole time, like, oh, you weren't eating yours yet? Oh my god, you gotta hurry or that thing's gonna disintegrate. <laughs> she, she lifts up her veil and begins to stuff it in her face. <laughs> You pass the time with Arch. It's just, it's a normal afternoon. Extremely pleasant. Um, you share a, you share a good meal, some, some kind words, and you finish your, your, your awful, awful food. She stands up at the other end of it and just, okay, I'm going to get back to work. All I right. think, I think my morning crowd should be arriving soon. Take right, just, it easy, just... Cassius. Thumbs up, call if you need anything. Of course. She's one of the few people that does have your phone number. <laughs> My real phone number. Yeah. <laughs> Looks at his you two cell phones. <laughs> you watch her disappear over the bridge and you realize, shit, I got the rest of the day to myself. I can go wherever. Like, he didn't my cohort go on the, is on off. The field trip, so. Yeah, you didn't go on the field trip because you had important stuff to do. Uh, and. Now that it's done, you got the rest of the city is yours. So, starting in exactly this moment, you can decide what direction to, to go in. Now, I just want any direction, that's wild. Yes, I should point out anywhere that is not hemmed in by a building or wall is a is a loading zone. This city is complete and continuous. You can go wherever the fuck you want, like this. This is the way to go. Hold on. This is the way to go. This is where you came from. I could go up. This is the way to go. Uh, this this is the way to go, and this is the way to go. You have so many options, um, and the choice is yours. But we should take a break first. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys on the loading screen. Fantastic work. <laughs> a break, you say? Well, yes. that sounds like a perfect time to do some shilling. Hey. Yes. You know what's you know you know if you want to get access to that word at World Anvil and also play along with the players and see what the players can see. If you donate to the Windrose Patreon for nine dollars a month, you'll be able to play along with the players and see exactly what they see whenever they meet a character. Wow, hey. J Man, that's a great deal. That's yes. a really good deal. Available? Pretty good deal. <laughs> You can you can check it out on the Windrose Everlasting Patreon. Let me drop a let me drop a link. It already uh, got me drop. Thanks, Weebu. Oh, yeah, thank oh Weeb, you're the best. So yeah, what this will do is basically post session. I'm gonna go through and check off anything that Roma has discovered about characters or things. Add it to the character pages. All of Arch's shit is is, is up for her. Um, I could even do it during the break. Yeah, fuck it. I'll post her page. Um. And uh, yeah, you can you can play along with the players because, as you're probably seeing, information is so fucking crucial to this campaign that I if I didn't do something like this, I would be asking an insane thing of my players. So yeah, entire campaigns written out in these. 
we gotta we still gotta upload a lot more of them but um yeah we're, we're getting to it we just we really we really rushed to get all this together for you guys uh and i'm really glad it's turning out so fucking good so far um, i love art i love her i love her she's so good i i love that these two weirdos are friends <laughs> like it's it is so lovely uh, let me post Arch's article publicly. Additionally, uh, well, I'll, I'll do that in a second. Uh, uh, so, Arch's article should now be up on the Indigo homepage. And you should be able to see her class. Let me see if it actually worked. It did not. There it goes. There we go. Arch is now the newest character. Oh. Oh, I see her. Yeah. And can you see her peddler class as well as fragility? Yes. Perfect. And I can see her age, pronouns, eye color, her favorite food, her likes, and her dislikes. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. So, wow, yeah, you can check out. Wow, see a character sheet that isn't redacted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, here you guys go if you want to see Arch's article, and if you want to see what Rome is seeing, you do the Patreon thing, because we got to make an account and shit. But that is not the only thing we have to show right now. If you like these characters, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm subscribed to Rome's Patreon for the tier that gets tokens, and I am going to use that every single month on Indigo, and... The immediate prod for you guys right now is if you like this, if you like Arch as a character, I kind of requested a casual costume for her that isn't like the big veil thing. And the sketches are already done, and when the when the pog itself is done, it'll be on Roma's Patreon before it's even in the campaign. So if you want to see a preview of that, I'm go over them there. Right now, the sketches. Yeah. Arch's concept art from when I was making her. You can see the time that she was almost a mouse. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> also uh, the concept art of her casual outfit. Yes, exactly. So, please do yeah. It. Please give Roma money. <laughs> please give, please give Roma money. It's only like, it's at like the $3 tier, right? Yeah, it's, it's just it's like three not, bucks. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Uh, I also want to shout out everybody who's made art for this. You've seen a lot of it so far. Our mask did a shitload. I also need to shout out, and I will do this a hundred thousand times. Bryn, Bryn, you freaking mad genius. You have done so much wonderful work for this. And we'll get to, we'll get to more people, but I, I want to, I want to give a special shout out to you. This, this is my phone background. <laughs> Oh, I yes. love this screen so much. <laughs> okay, with the, with all the shilling being said, let's let's take a five minute break, eat something, get a drink. We'll come back. I'll put us back on the loading screen with some wonderful fan art by Metal. Um, I realized we have only landed on the 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 Roma loading screens, but there are these, Doink. which are lovely as well. Oh, oh love it! My is so funny. <laughs> The link is up in the chat, but I will send it again in just a yes. moment when I'm done posting this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the bathroom, get a drink, etc. Uh, J man, if you could hold down the fort and then we'll trade. Sweet. Okay, you're about. There we go. Okay. Hey, chat. How's it going? You guys enjoying Indigo so far? I hope you are. We spent a year working on this. Yeah, forever. J Man and J have been working their asses off! You have two masks. You've made way more maps than I did. Yeah, but those were just fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, of all the big people are done shilling, so I'm obliged to. I'm in a. Uh, if you're interested in me, who's not in this episode, I'm in a game every Friday with a bunch of really cool people over on. Clockwork Grunts Twitch, so it's called Lost Times. It's set in like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure setting, but with a bunch of original spins on it. It's really good. Everyone in it is really good. And now I have officially made up for the last time I was on a stream and forgot to shill it. So bam, we're good. Nice. Yeah. You also, if you, uh, if you go to my Patreon and look at the concept art, Arch's casual outfit, we'll get to see a lot more about, like, her race. <laughs> and, like, what she is. Because, uh, it's hard to tell from the icon. 
Mm hmm. Happy you're excited, Mr. Spartan. Absolutely shocked, yeah. yeah there, there was a uh, there was a fun moment a few uh, a few a few days ago, where uh, when Jay actually made that little effect with uh, the red line happening, uh, he was trying to get he was trying to get my attention, but without without alerting other people in the call uh, that he was trying to get my attention to look at the uh, roll twenty to see how it was working, uh, but Ooh. I couldn't see it. So, instead, he just horribly ripped me out of that call into another call, and then made me look at it, and where in which, when we returned, Aram Nate, one Mr. Aram, said, uh, said, who'd you leave with? You have secrets? Fine, keep your <laughs> secrets! <laughs> I am not the only player, right? Somebody in chat asked. You're not I'm the only player. player. I'm the only player for this session. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unless some very wacky shit happens, you are the only player for this session. I should also say, full disclaimer, from here on out, I have no, no idea what happened. Yeah, <laughs> like, neither I have no fucking clue. Yeah. Um, Amy is one of the announced players. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe like, only two or three of the players have been announced so far, I think. Two. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna start, so, I'm gonna start drafting up, uh, J-Man, if you need to take a break, go for it. Okay. Um, Beer beat. I'm gonna start drafting up one of the polls, because we've got some special Twitch-specific interaction for you guys. Now, it is common to roll on encounter tables to figure out what the fuck is going on. I thought, what could, what is a more exciting way to do that? You guys are going to instead roll for us on the encounter table. Um, you're, basically, I'm going to ask, okay, I'm going to ask a completely arbitrary question to you, and whatever your, whatever your vote is will determine the outcome, so most, most of my encounter tables have, like, four outcomes on them. The first of them, and keep this in mind, is what is your favorite suit of cards? Really simple, but depending on what you choose something different will happen in the story and these will run through the entire campaign this is this is how i plan on doing encounter rolling and it keeps you guys involved which oh, is i just keep looking fun. at i'm fucking <laughs> i just love her so fucking much yeah you did so good i look like okay i am having the goddamn time of my life so far <laughs> I finally get to talk to her. <laughs> I finally yeah. get to say words at her. I, oh my god, you guys, I've, I've kept so many secrets for so long about what, what was going on in this campaign, so. Arch was the first picture I drew for Indigo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so, last year. So if you, if your guess was specifically like, if your guess for the genre of this was like a, like a horror slash occult VN with dating sim elements, Good job, you're psychic. <laughs> you figured it out. Me you got guessing, the game. guessing mystery, slight horror dating sim. You fucking try. monster, yeah. <laughs> first fucking try, dude. I was genius. Tim, yeah. You, yeah. Me, you showed me that fucking thing, that that one thing that I don't know how I'm allowed to talk about. <laughs> the chart, the chart that you made. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is a dating sim. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's I'm no back. way to like this in this. Welcome period. back. What is your what are you favorite about? suit of cards? Can I see the fucking bond up art again, by the way? Because that was uh, yes. fucking adorable. Oh Mask did that. Okay, okay. Mask? Let me let that me grab it. So fucking cute. I'm gonna cry. By the way, uh, these will make excellent emotes and avatars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I saw that. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <He's like laughs> yeah, Mask did a bunch of them, and I think like three days time. Yeah, this was the thing where I'm like, literally two days before the thing, I'm like, Mask, I'm so sorry, I got this idea, and he's like, no, dude, I got this. Never <laughs> apologize for the greatest idea <laughs> in human history. Oh, it's so cute, and, uh, this is not exclusive to these characters, is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> um, oh my god, how many of these are... <coughs> 
Thing. How many times <laughs> can I bond up with right now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't All right, well, I'm gonna start. Cassie's oh, yeah, yeah. so many fucking best friends, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> also, uh, someone I said put them all on Twitch right now. Actually, what our plan is is we're going to let folks vote on which ones show up on Twitch because yes. there's very limited emote slots. Yeah, exactly. You guys, you guys get to decide which ones show up. Uh, there will be some gone. that I'm just like, no, this one's happening. Th this one is occurring. Mask is mask is a fucking god. Appreciate him. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. Uh, I'm just incredibly psyched to be helping! You Can I have the Cassius one to make my icon? Yes. <laughs> Go for it! <laughs> I think we have that in a place where we can just link it really easily. So, I'm going to I'm going to start the poll. You have ten minutes to respond, because I want plenty of time. Um, I'm not gonna enable bits per vote, because that feels exploitative. Uh, mm. or channel points per vote. That- that feels- that feels cheaty. Um... Uh, and... But I'll post it with the 10 minute duration and like, yeah, here you go. What's, what's your favorite suit of cards? You got 10 minutes time to for my Time for my unpopular ass opinion. <laughs> uh, wait, okay, I'm set time. If you somehow haven't already, we have <laughs> a Discord. Oh, oh, God that? bless you. Yeah. Okay, go. guys. Join the Discord. <laughs> Go check out the fan Discord. Link in the link in the lower right panel. Let me let me grab this adorable ass Cassius icon. So um, like, my instinct was clubs, right? But mm. I also love diamonds. I gotta pick clubs, right? Because it's my instinct. Yeah. Clubs, right? Clubs is like the yeah. best card. It's the most underrated suit. I I yeah I respect that. Oh, also, Aaron asks. Is there a straw poll, or do we spam Twitch chat? There is a Twitch poll, specifically. Yeah, if you look at the top is... of the chat, it says, what's your favorite suit of card? There's a little yeah. down, like a little down arrow. Get with you the times, old man! <laughs> <laughs> Aram says, what? Technology? <laughs> Twitch? <laughs> Twitch? <laughs> I, oh boy, this is a fun outcome so far. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not gonna look at the poll. I'll get, I'll get caught up in it. Let so me just open this and save it so I can make it my icon. This is so cute. Man. <laughs> it's so oh fucking my God. cute. I love these. Um, so are you ready to get back into it? And there will be, yeah. there will be more breaks from now on because I've got to respond to your, like your actions probably with loading screens, just to be like, no, okay, I you did this. Mm -hmm. Cass is so. going to come flying out of left field like, I don't know what he's going to do. Honestly, I don't know what this mad lad's going to do. <laughs> that, I wouldn't have it any other way. Let's, let's drop you right there and stop the arch date music. Doink. And swap to theme of the city. First of go. these hard, hard questions. <laughs> so, Which fucking direction do I walk? Yeah, Cassius, what direction do you walk? I can give you a quick synopsis. Taking a taking a right leads you back to Shrine Street in your home district. Mostly, like, potato detectives are there usually, but not today, so that's not that interesting, I guess. This leads you to the, uh, this direction leads you to the head of Main Street. Pretty much the most, like, bustling, popular area in town. Okay. Um... <laughs> and then this way leads you to the far end of Main Street, which is um like it's it's a nice little area immediately before the university. The largest lamp in the city rests there and it's sort of like the heart of the electric grid. Or you can head up this way, which leads you to East Street, which is where your old precinct is and your favorite diner. It's just something if it's like Cassius is like did the thing he was supposed to do today already. Yeah. Now he's just vibing. Yeah. He's just kind of walking. I feel like he walked around before he met up with Arch. So I'm like... He might go up towards the top of Main Street, I think. Top of Main Street? Fantastic. I walk over there. So Exciting. That you, can, you can have a little extra time before you take okay. me to the loading screen. <laughs> Getting to the top of Main Street. Exciting. Okay. Um... You you walk down this narrow canal and like you it's look over. It's fucking pretty, dude. Yeah, no, you look at the you look at the clear ass water. It wasn't always this way. Like during factional occupation, 
Littering's way down. Probably because Calamity Tempest is scary as shit. Uh, most people don't want to throw stuff... Most people don't want to throw stuff away. <laughs> like, they'll, they'll properly dispose of it because, well, there's a difference between a cop and a soldier and... Oh boy, <laughs> you start to think about some heavy stuff while looking at the pretty water. <laughs> Cassius thinks about these things regularly. Yeah, he does. And you head to the top of Main Street. Just drop you right over. I see you, cat. It's the first thing I see when I load in. Let me drop you. Right. I hope you know, I scour every map for the, oh, yeah. <laughs> for the one icon that I want to see. <laughs> you see, you see Wanox. <laughs> um, okay. can you come up eh, right here? Huge. Yes, a little big at first. And yeah, you pass by a, you pass by a... so fucking pretty, dude. <laughs> Oh, uh, down here? Fantastic, yeah. So, yeah, you, you walk on to the very end of Main Street. You look at the you look at the biggest lamp, and there's a, there's a bar immediately to your right. Doors are closed. Um, yeah, feel free to wander. You, you've been here plenty of times. It's, it's a relatively problem-free area, probably because, you know, Tempest is in this, this area. And... What's up here? Uh, that is the university. That's what I thought. I'm gonna go yep. there. <laughs> Ooh, you're going to the university. Exciting. Yeah, okay. It's like, okay. Actually, no, I know what I want to do. Okay. I'm gonna come to this very populated area and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna red ribbon of fate. Oh, exciting. Okay. Um, so, roll to die really quick. And that swaps you over to Manic Cassius, which is great. Uh, so, holy fuck. Um, yeah, you can choose to lock in one of these colors. However, you also... Let me let me get you a health bar really quick. You've got 15 HP, start of the campaign. Um, you are going to take uh, four of it in damage. Yes. And you swap over to Manic Cassius. Click keep red. You're at 11. Perfect. And... Oh boy. Okay. So a few things are gonna happen right now. <laughs> Fuck. I just want to. Okay. I just want to. I just want to know what he's got on his hands. You know, like what does yeah. he have? To, like what? What? What leads has he like put a pin in so far? Because like when he puts a pin in a lead, it is a physical thing that he does to his hand. He's tying them yeah. to his hand physically. So he's like, all right, the rest of the day is free. I guess I'm just gonna go wander around and try and find <laughs> stuff out. I'm just gonna try and look for shit. What's oh, he got boy. going on? So, a few things happen immediately. You you wander out into the middle of the street and the static overwhelms your eyes, same as usual, and you watch a few lines trace out. Let's let's handle this one first. Um Oh boy, okay, okay. One of these people is gonna be a fucking yarn ball and it's gonna be a disaster. <laughs> which well, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> just just wow. Um first up, you you put out your senses and you feel you feel the presence of two people traveling your direction. And um they they start to walk past and they're they're mostly mumbling to themselves and in that in that pitch black world state, you Time seems to move more slowly, and you can more carefully overhear their words. They each have some lines coming from them and seemingly scanning the city. None of them go to you, but they mumble. They mumble something as they walk past. Oh boy, headquarters was a bust. Um, we gotta meet Doctor B's quota somehow. Um, hmm. right, let's check the Hana district, and they uh. They, they walk past, and you you feel a string connecting you to them. And then, another thing happens. <laughs> you, you feel, um... Fuck. Oh, God. One of the strings on your fingers begins to, to tug, actually. It leads you down Main Street. You, you feel a pretty strong tug. 
Like, there's actually sort of a disturbance happening happening at the end of it. And, hold on, hold still. There's, there's just still getting more. <laughs> I'm just saying, if there's one that is pulling, he's going to walk that way, most likely. Depending. If there's, multi- if there's like, some other crazy shit, then maybe not. But that's, there's, like... There's some other crazy bit. shit happening. I did um, walk into a super populated area and go, tell me what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, one more thing happens for activating this specifically here of all places. I blow up. Yeah, you just detonate. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the fucking lantern smites me instantly. You feel, um. Cassius, suddenly you feel sort of a cold, cool presence on the back of your uh, neck. Jimmy. And. <laughs> You're being possessed by a ghost. Johnny Johnny shanks you. (laughs) No, Johnny Johnny fucks off. Um you feel like somebody's around you and then you you hear a voice before you see her, and you hear a call of Oh, if those memories are getting too heavy for you, I could always take them away. She smiles at you. This what the hell? You don't know where this person fucking came from? She is he a god that out loud, by the way. He definitely she says, says that, what the hell? She says that to you, smiles blissfully. Uh a, a look that could sort of churn butter to a certain degree. I'm friends to people like you. Don't worry about it. Uh and great. Uh I'm you good blink, though. And she's gone. Okay, that's great. That's okay. I put a pin on that one. <laughs> Cassie's like, that's fucking weird. That doesn't know what fucking happened. Yep. <laughs> you uh you you let that moment pass and you're just like, okay. A lot a lot just occurred. Her, if those memories are too much for you, Cassius, what memories? What <laughs> memories? They don't exist. <laughs> anyway, back to the normal theme. Everything's fine. Cassius. Thanks for activating Red Ribbon of Fate on this map specifically. Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's fucking weird, but I got other shit to deal with. I'll come back to that. <laughs> Can you give me another roll to die? This time just click keep just click click keep red. Because it will save your red stat that is already high and add everything to it. 12. Fantastic. Okay. Fuck, uh, you get this. <laughs> you you go to Main Street first up and let me grab a loading screen. I gotta get something I ready. Get a world handful page. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite yet. No, no, I know. Um it's just a page with her icon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> um, let me hop over here. Get something ready really quick. I feel like that was like, I feel like Cassius is the worst person to approach about the memory bullshit, right? It's like, <laughs> it's worst, worst pick, bad pick, lady. <laughs> yeah, building off of that, you rolled you rolled a twelve. So I'm gonna give you what's called a vignette. These are scenes that don't necessarily feature your character's POV, but that are occurring elsewhere in the city. One of the player characters has the ability to force this to happen. They can just go, "Yo, I want one for this." Um, that is not you, Cassius. However. If you roll high enough, when sensing people with your passive perception like that, you can cause you can cause a vignette to occur that maybe gives you a little bit of insight into another person. Now, this mysterious lady might have been might have been something strange, but uh yeah, we, we get we get some clarity almost immediately. Meanwhile, on the university path, she walks away almost gleefully giggling to herself. I think that went great. Oh, he was probably really impressed. I said something cool, like, ooh, I could take those memories away. Oh, he probably thinks I'm fantastic. She she laughs to herself, extremely proud of the job she's done. Good job, Alcott. Excellent job, Alcott. Oh, wonderful job, Alcott. You did perfectly. Bond up, Alcott. Good job. <laughs> she, skipping, goes back to her home in the university. 
And there's Girl. your vignette. Girl, this is but avoid you. <laughs> you, brought the, you brought the wrong thing up. <laughs> you should have said, hey, you want me to talk about the one thing you don't want to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> she thinks she gets along with people. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm sure she's well-meaning, but Han. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, are you going to are you going to pursue the biggest disturbance? Yes, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. That, if that thing pulls, Cassie's like, time to go. Oh boy. Okay, we're going. You missed you missed that shit. Um. <laughs> oh boy. You. <laughs> Glad you rolled high on that, that's fun. Um, you travel a little bit further down Main Street and yeah, uh, it's, it's tugging pretty hard. Oh, you reckon, you, you see, you look around and you see, oh God, that's a lot of Tide's Edge just fucking everywhere, <laughs> crawling over the goddamn <laughs> district. And like, you, uh, it's, that's probably not a good sign because they're discussing something off to the side. They're grouping up and looking further down Main Street. The Tuggins coming from that direction. I see him. <laughs> I, I must not. <laughs> you look and you see a, a red-haired man disappear down a hole in the ground. <laughs> He's probably doing something important. <laughs> <laughs> I scan. I hope you know. Every time you take me on a new map, I was scanning the whole oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> kind of like these guys a wide fucking berth. Yeah, but maybe this, a little bit east up. <laughs> this is the tide's edge. They run seaside. The more Fuck. city. Yeah, the city side uh, of the city. They they manage the casinos, the 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 various like bars out there. They generally keep order. They're ex monster hunters who were elevated into the position of sort of the new police. They try their best. They're well meaning, but they tend to come off a little strong. They wear those fancy clothes to try to blend, but you can see through it. Most of them are trained killers and monster hunters. <laughs> And you, stopping right here, okay. you sense those two who were like, oh, we got to go fill quota. They went this direction. They went off to, They went off this way. That is Which... not the biggest disturbance right now, but that is the way they went. You can feel it. Which way is the big, biggest disturbance? Oh, straight down. <laughs> Just like it is pulling straight, not like... It is pulling reasonably hard straight this way. Okay, I will go that way. Okay. You he is go... a little bit single-minded. Yeah, you go. Cassius heads in this direction, and you travel <laughs> over a few. You travel over a few bridges. Oh, hey, there's the store you buy your juice boxes at. Nice. You take a mental <laughs> note to come back here later. <laughs> um, Am I low on juice boxes? You know what? Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna say you're low on juice boxes. How hard is this pulling? Pretty hard. Yeah, pretty hard. I'll be back. <laughs> Cassius, you go to the top of Main Street. Oh, and... that looks like a fucking mess. Yeah, you see the mess. I see something other than the mess, too. Oh, there's there's a lot happening on this screen. So, you look you look across and you see you see a bunch of RNAs holding back. They the RNAs run an outpost. It's sort of a sort of a tech shop here. And, uh, you, God, you, you see, you see a, a, a sort of throng of people pressing up against them. There's, there's actually a pretty raucous call from down there, and you can, you can tell, like, it's not quite a riot, but it's getting there. I'm not gonna, like, involve myself. Yeah. But I'm gonna kind of head down there just so I can get a grip on the situation. I'm not gonna fucking help these guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna help either side, but I'm yeah. gonna kind of stand over here. Okay, and, and just try watch. And get assess the situation a little bit. <laughs> the RNA and guards are communicating. Look, listen, I I get it. There have been a lot of outages lately, but at the same time, we don't exactly have enough electricians to hook your house back up. I'm 
I understand that, but we have been without lights, without power for a week at this point. Please, we can't rely on the last resort and the last resort alone. Um, this, you managed to pick up amidst all the sort of disruption, all the, the rabbling. Do you, do you try to, do you try to get a sense of what's going on with the crowd? Uh, from what I can tell, they are, it's, is it the general power is out or that the, um, oh, okay, the yeah. satellite or whatever that the RNA That's is That's a good question. Off so, of. so you know what's going on with this situation because you have helped a lot of old people with this. The, the actual power cabling that powers older devices that don't work off of the sail, the satellite, basically, are starting to go on the fritz. The wiring's old. There are no electricians in the city anymore. Not like, not officially. RNA is, yeah. RNA is all that people have to rely on. And like, look at that. There's four people here. But you, you look and that's not all. Flanking them on both sides are some pretty heavily armored figures. You see some Tempest and you see this guy down here. Is he like what are his like what are his vibes like his Oh his body language is completely casual. No, I mean like his is he a yarn? Oh. Oh, okay. Um Your default senses tell you nothing. Um you just you just like you look at him and there's no there's no reaction. It's almost like he's a normal civilian. Hmm. He's either new, or I'm just not paying enough attention. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can obviously red string individual people to, to get a better read, HP. but it costs HP. And I, I have that, and I can I can do that, but I don't want to, you know, fuck it's, myself up that bad. It's kind of scary. <laughs> um, so from what I can tell, it's just these people are upset about the power being out? Yeah, there's a disturbance here. You can sense a riot is sort of forming. Yeah, there's not much little old Cassius can do to help with that, honestly. Yep. Can like, you give me like... a roll to die really quick? Give me give yes. me red. Red? Uh, do keep, keep red? red, since you've already got red. Oh! Jesus! Look, Cassius is kind of a champ. Cassius is kind of on the fucking ball. How do I react to this? Okay. It's definitely like he's like, he sees the people, he wants to help the people. And he's like, is this string pulling because a riot is forming? Or is this string pulling because something is happening that these people don't realize? Like, there's something bigger happening here. Oh, yeah. The string seems to lead to the Tempest people over here who are sitting and watching, but... As you draw your attention to them, and this is this is to reward your high roll, um, you overhear something. This this one whispering to the other, like they're basically to describe these three in a line. There are there appear to be two grunt level Tempest people and some sort of a captain. There, but the captain's huge. She's like probably seven two, seven three, um, and is adorned in. Slightly more elaborate armor. It's also significantly more dented. The one to her immediate right whispers to her something. He's he's looking at you, actually. That's the uh that's the one that's been causing trouble over on Holland's Shrine Street. And you feel their attention focus in on you. He's gonna keep acting like he's looking over at this, like He's almost yeah. kind of like a, a little bit comically like, oh no, what's happening over there? Like, <laughs> but and... he's definitely like fucking watching them and <laughs> kind of like getting, paying attention to him. He's like, he kind of like a little bit loudly, like, I guess I'll come back later. <laughs> Turns around and walks away. You. Uh, you actually hear her call to you. Wait a moment. And... He turns he... around like, who? Little old me? <laughs> Little old me? 
<laughs> you can you can feel a sort of presence build behind you, and the woman draws up for, to her full height and starts to walk towards you. The, uh, my ass, dude. <laughs> the two guards following behind her, she takes step after step, and they are fucking heavy. On the other side, you can notice that this string wasn't tied to her, but the two people behind her, and as their attention shifts to you, you can feel yourself preventing some form of violence? The the string grows weaker. It uh, seems like, like pulling it was about to do has been diverted and is now has been away. diverted. Uh, that string now leads to you. Oh shit! She she takes a step forward <laughs> and like she's like ro- approaching him right, and you see he yeah. like was pointing at himself like me like question mark, and you see yeah. him like he looks at his hand, looks at the two guys like obviously looking past her, looks at the two guys behind her, looks at his hand. Sharp <laughs> inhale. <laughs> And His those body two, language changes pretty quickly. Those two, those two, like actually arresting their hands on their weapons, which horrific sign. But she walks forward. She stands immediately in front of you, a fucking colossus. And she she looks down. I hear you're the one who has been operating out of Shrine Street. Uh, I. I live there, <laughs> and my <laughs> my job is there. Yeah. Um, the two you've you've given the tempest trouble in the past, and I definitely have. <laughs> you are you are waiting for this moment to happen. They're they're sort of the military police of this town, and they've committed their fair share of violence. You get the feeling they were about to commit their fair share of violence in response to this crowd, and she reaches out her hand, and you you see it. You feel yourself caught in the shadow of it. This, this monolith, this gigantic thing. She slowly, slowly swings it down, and her two her two henchmen wait to react. She puts it out for a handshake. Excellent work you've been doing. Thank you. He shakes <laughs> her hand. <laughs> they stop. This one walks forward. Boss, what? <laughs> they they move forward completely disarmed. You feel the string snap like it was connecting you to them. You, <laughs> this is he he's given a lot of us. Tr- he's given me trouble. Yes, I'm sure he has. She turns around. I I wanted to celebrate. I suppose the job you've been doing. You've been keeping my boys on their toes, and while we're able to bring order to this place. We're unable to understand the hearts of the citizens here. I think you perform a crucial function here. I, the order I bring cannot bring joy to them. So, it takes citizens like you operating privately to do so. I applaud you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, he says. (laughs) I do want to ask, do I know if Tempest is one of the RNA and mercenary groups? This is the RNA and mercenary group, and you recognize Thank you, this. He says, <laughs> sucking back his intense hatred. <laughs> this, yeah, you. you... Too, he says, sucking back his intense <laughs> hatred. <laughs> she, uh, you had you had red prepped, right? Yes. Okay, uh, do me a favor. Roll to do right now. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> so this was a clash. <laughs> wow, because I thought it's like I had max six and max twenty. Wow. She rolled in with the red as well. And you know what? I'm gonna give you you're not gonna get a bond up. No, god no. But I am gonna give you some details about this character. This, this is Cerisa the Red. She is the de facto leader of the Calamity Tempest. Oh, fuck. She she is the head of the military occupation here. She doesn't dress fancy. She doesn't have to. Her presence speaks enough about her. And you saw the power and the weight behind her hand. I'm going to reveal her red stat for you. It is, as she said, 
order. And the bonus to it is a maximum plus nine. There is no way to get a stat higher in the game. She is overwhelmingly powerful. But in this moment that she My dick reaches... is just a little bigger. <laughs> she reaches out and... No, she, was, she wasn't going to, like, reach for a handshake. She was reaching out for a condescending pat on the head or shoulder, like a good job, kid. But as it was coming at you, you caught it and turned it into a respectful handshake. <laughs> and you that look at each... strong, guys, handshake. <laughs> <laughs> and Cassius, the fucking unstoppable, diverts this immovable force and she looks down at you with respect hmm. <laughs> she comes I... at me with condescension Cassius genuinely trying to say like thanks for the compliment yeah. you too even though yeah, he she... <laughs> hates her so much instead of being petty he's being yeah. like actually nice and her like being she... condescending and kind of petty she she actually stops like sort of holds your hand for a moment and retracts I apologize. I suppose I came off as a little condescending. I need to work on my attitude a little bit. You are clearly worthy of genuine respect. And I'll offer you that. I appreciate it. I can <laughs> offer it to everybody I meet. <laughs> she slowly nods. So, I'll count on you to keep up the good work. Continue to bring the people joy. I'll continue to bring them order. And... The crowd, which is, has been growing louder and louder as you talked, is suddenly disrupted by a single word. Silence. The dread spreads throughout all of them, and they turn around looking at her. Door of Menace comes, and she walks back over and sits down, and the crowd begins to organize themselves into orderly lines. The two who have been put off by this exchange slowly shake their heads and move over to take their leader's side. <laughs> Cassius, you've managed to completely divert this riot from happening and I'm going to give you experience for it. Thank you. I definitely just got my name put on a list, dude. And I don't know what it's her hit list or what, but it's on it now. <laughs> she, it's weird. You, you now sense a string connecting her to you, mm -hmm. and That's you look bad. at it. You look at it, and you feel the quality of it. This is a string. <laughs> this is a string that you haven't felt before, or you have, but fuck, mostly Weaker. with. Street punks? You get the feeling she kind of wants to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, because it's definitely like, Cassius is definitely someone that you should respect. Not yeah. in a fight. Not yeah. in a fight. His job is to keep those from happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the with the situation resolved, you're, you, you unclench and relax. And you feel like you did a fucking good job today. <laughs> yeah. ah, you crit versus one of the fucking end bosses. Cassius <laughs> is kind of a god. <laughs> Dude, that's the maximum thing I could have possibly <gasps> rolled. Max d6, max d20. I cannot <laughs> roll higher than that physically right now. Oh my god. <laughs> It was also your red stat, which is about being tough. Tough, <laughs> like, yeah. Huh, huh, beautiful. <laughs> okay, something just changed, of that changed about the campaign. I'm happy. <laughs> Cassius has a fucking red dot on his head. He's about to get sniped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to go get juice boxes. <laughs> you leave to go get juice boxes. <laughs> you've you've had enough excitement for a lifetime over the last ten minutes. Let's put you on a loading screen. Holy fuck, my face hurts from smiling after that. <laughs> 
Well, Jesus. good good thing that none of those people got hurt. <laughs> yeah. That's all he gives a shit about. <laughs> yeah. No, you you stop the situation from developing, and you you now know the calamity tempest leader personally. So that's that's cool. You know that's cool. Can't wait, can't wait to like uh. Can't wait to like we run into her and the fire, and he's like, oh hey, nice to see you again. Gets fucking cold cocked, and he's like, great. <laughs> My favorite thing is like people be like, I want to fight Cassius. He's so like cool or whatever. And you then look Cassius, at him. <laughs> you look at him. And it's like he looks like he would be cool and strong. And then you look he at does. like you, I, you know what his weapons are, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's like so not a fighter. <laughs> oh my god, I love him. <laughs> okay. Cassius pulls out a gun, and a little flag pops out that says, "Please surrender. Oh, please, please don't fight violence. Please is do bad. not fight me." <laughs> Confetti flies out. Holy shit. And yeah, you're... You can hit him, though. He'll <laughs> die. It'll be fine. <laughs> your your juice box station is over there. I, I'm going to get juice box. He deserves <laughs> it. Is, okay, is this... Is this, this is the door the down door? here. Okay, yeah, this, this is... Yeah, that's the way you go. Okay. So, give me another roll to die. Just do keep red. You've been doing great with red. <laughs> you can obviously swap to a different color if you so wish. You keep, you keep getting exa So, for, for the record, for a roll to die, the DCs are, generally, a 10 is for, like, a normal challenge, a 12 is the, like, slightly more difficult one, and I have set you to the slightly more difficult time. Every single time you've rolled, and you have gotten it. Every single time. I'm, oh. Uh, <laughs> Cassius is, Cassius is fucking strong. Okay, so. Cassius is very good, kind of bad day. <laughs> yeah, no, he's doing great. Um, Give me one second. I'm going to put you to a loading screen as you go into the shop. I got to drop two characters off. Oh, boy. By the way, chat, while we're while we're on this loading screen, I swear if I see another person called Cassius Twink, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> Illegal. Look at him. <laughs> he is obviously no leaning. He has aspects of everything. He's he, No, Cassius, Cassius has an additional triangle. Rabid. Rabid. You see, Rabid. Cassius Cassius can no longer be Twink for he is certain. He's dominance. not a twunk! It, it, it's not a twunk. Yeah, he he has asserted dominance on the Chad Cerisa. Therefore, <laughs> like I want you to understand, if Cassius had a leaning, it would be the no leaning corner, slightly tilted towards like bonk. like honk a little bit bonk. Because he's got the he's got the facial hair. He's got he well, if you took his like chest shit off, he would have chest hair and like yeah. leg hair and arm hair. He's not like a clean shaven guy, and he's. T tall and kind of buff, like, but he's not, like, purposely keeping himself fit, you know? He's not yes. a twink. He's, he's not. not on that side of the you chart. Can, you can, no, you can't call him that, but if you want to be wrong, you can. <laughs> like, go for it. Be incorrect. Um. Okay, so we're gonna jump to this map with you and your fucking godlike rolls, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus I'm just, Christ. I'm sorry, my fucking rolls have been so fucking good. I'm no, scared. You've, this I'm gonna perfect. start rolling like ass cheeks. <laughs> you. You walk into your favorite shop. That that one's not important. Um, you walk into your favorite shop and uh you oh, she's cute. Yeah, you watch as this rather diminutive figure who looks like she, she looks she looks like a layer cake like a like a wedding cake she's walking towards you with absolutely fucking way the hell too many packages and she scoots in your general direction but you know you're ready for this shit you get the feeling that chat voted to voted for spades and got this result and uh you're 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 prepped and you're ready and uh she takes a step before you uh, right as she's about to impact you and you step aside and stop her from tipping over. <laughs> and I grab any packages that fall. Like a <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 like, stops for a second and you manage to catch two or three of them actually with surprising ease. Oh my god, I am so sorry. It. You look at her, she looks at you. You, you recognize this girl. Yeah! No, absolutely! She's the waitress from your favorite uh, diner. What? 
What you doing here? Oh, hey. Cassius! Hey! What? hey. Uh, uh, hi, um... You, like, delivering or something? What's going on? Yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm getting supplies for the church. Um, I... It's weird to see you outside the diner. Oh, uh, sorry about that. She, like, takes the packages back. Do um, you need some help? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I hate asking for help, but yeah, sure, that'd be... That'd be nice. <laughs> okay, hand, them hand them back. He's gonna take some of them. He'll he'll help her out. He she... can buy juice boxes at any time. <laughs> oh, uh, I could treat you on the way back or something. Um, I, I guess I owe you for this. It's it's weird. Yeah, like you've you've talking you've talked to this girl a few times. She's she's probably like a few years younger than you. She she works at the the diner, your your favorite diner. Pretty sure she. Yeah, she's the one who owns the the pet kid in that you like. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yes, I will help her. I will help her. <laughs> I, will <laughs> I can pet her her kitty. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know if we've ever been like actually introduced. Um, my name's Frelia. Uh, nice, nice to meet you, Cassius. I know that because you write that name on the check. What? <laughs> yeah, Mumbles. I'm Cassius. Nice to meet you, Frelia. <laughs> Okay, now it's official. Excellent. She smiles, and you two start to you two start to walk out. And chat, I'm gonna need another vote. This one's gonna be far quicker. Um, let's grab one. This poll's only going to have three minutes on it, so uh, get those votes in. Yeah. What's uh What's your favorite flavor of juice box? Uh. Roma, give me some give me some juice box answers. Like what? Orange what? juice. Orange. Pineapple okay. juice. Pineapple. Mango juice. Apple Mango. juice. Apple. Okay, those are your choices. Duration: five minutes. Go for it. Or three minutes. We're gonna do three for this one. There is a right answer. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do grape juice. Oh, <laughs> That's the right answer. Grape juice is the Cassius, right answer for Cassius. Cassius keeps all the grape juice for himself. <laughs> He really uh, does keep all the grape juice for himself, though. Let me drop you guys back here. Delete this, Cassius. Hop over here. So, yeah, you, 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 you're carrying these packages, and, like, it's weird. Uh, you expect her to be carrying stuff like, I don't know, personal goods, but this is, like, a shitload of bread. Like, an absolute assload of bread. Like, why does she have so much bread? You um, said you're getting this for the church, right? Mm-hmm. She nods. Every time she nods, you notice her hair is sort of twisting and twining away up into the air. She's apparently got some, like, air elemental blood or something. It emerges from the top of her hat like a smokestack. That's <laughs> she, <kinda cute. laughs> she, she walks. She walks along like a cloud. Cassie's trying to keep up. I'm having <laughs> red stat right now, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tough. Yeah, she she walks with a lot of purpose, and you notice she's got, like, a, a staff on her back. Two staves? Huh, weird. That's not none of my business. <laughs> she's you... got some staves, that's cool. Probably like a magic <laughs> user or something. She beat somebody over the head with those staves. <laughs> you quickly deduce <laughs> Cassius's... Uh, Cassius's brain working over time. You, like, you walk into... You walk into the Haunted District, which is on the way to the Cathedral District. There's... You're you're familiar with the walk. You're familiar with the area. Um, the Cathedral District itself is, like... It's... It's it's a place you don't go to often. But you've been to the 13th Ward plenty of times. The Raujan District. Uh... In fact, that's one of your favorite places in the entire city, so it's not like you're unfamiliar with this walk. It's just a little out of your territory. It's like and... an area I know going a different way than I know. Exactly. And yeah, you you go into the you go into the haunted district, and I need the results of this poll, so I'm gonna end it right now. Get get your votes in, you got five seconds. And poll. Apple juice. The anticipated flavor. Fantastic. Okay. Give me two seconds to set something up. Okay. 
Two seconds indeed. Okay. Yeah, you, you walk with her a, for a bit. She doesn't talk much, but she has a sort of soothing presence. Um... Guess like is fine with not talking. Yeah, like, you... He would be more anxious if she tried to make conversation with him. You go to her cafe pretty regularly. Um, it's... serves some good food. Like, she preps it herself, and honestly, the place is adorable as heck. Um, and, like, that... that sort of aura, that calmness that pervades her, her diner, also seems to surround her and put you at ease, too. It's, like, familiar... Yeah, but all that is sort of it's sort of brought to an end as you enter the haunted uh. district and you see a scene unfolding. Um let me find it. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my icon to my <laughs> my like chill one because I'm I'm yeah. still like I still have my You're still red, but, strings, yeah. but like He's not gonna have the crazy face while he's walking around with packages, delivering packages with, like, a girl. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> he's just chilling right now, he's just vibing. You, uh... You look across... <laughs> yeah, it's... Good, good one. <laughs> um, you look down the, down the familiar street and you see... Two guards and one of their captains, sort of like... Actually, pretty forcibly restraining two two punks. Um, oh, they're 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 on the younger side of things. Um, and uh, yeah, no, they're they're sort of dragging them away. Oh. Hey, what's in this box? Um, that one, that one, that one. Um, I think there's a bunch of bags of milk in there. God dang, what's in this one? He's like pulling out different one he has. Apples. This will be fine, right? Here, take the milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, what's the plan? I'm gonna pretend to trip and dump yeah. apples all over those guys. <laughs> she she smiles. Okay, I'll back you up. <laughs> uh, she she rearranges the packages in her hands so that they are particularly higher and uh, begins to begins to walk forward actually a little bit in front of you. You hear a little bit of their conversation. This is bullshit. We weren't doing anything. I mean, yeah, nothing right now, but... And you get close, and you feel you feel one of her feet stick out, and it kind of starts to trip you. Oh my god, I'm so sorry! And you ah. go tripping forward and <laughs> spill apples all over this group. Give me a roll. Give me a roll to do. Holy fuck! <laughs> you cannot see the fucking face I just made. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude, one more and I get a werewolf roommate. You get a werewolf. Your apartment is officially occupied by werewolves, Cassius, you goddamn legend. Um, you get a special memory for this called the Apple Maneuver. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> dramatically. You, you dramatically spill apples everywhere. All over these three. And, uh... <laughs> this guy just... Like in the in the split second of confusion, fucking darts off. This one starts to run away too. They're like, "Hey, hold it!" And you trip and entangle yourself with this one. It's a fucking nightmare. These two are thoroughly bamboozled. These guys just fucking take off. <laughs> They're gone. And oh my Cassie's, goodness, you are left in a pile of apples with the calamity tempest. <laughs> Oh my he's god, like, I'm so sorry. That he was like my He like lays fault. on his back, you know, like he just fell over. And he's like, ah, oh, my back. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness, the... are you guys okay? <laughs> Stan, what he the hell up. was that? This guy like pulls you to to your feet. What was that? Uh, sorry, I she. I she it, it bumped was my into fault. me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I uh, dropped my the apples. My packages were really high. You need to watch where you're going. Um, 
you feel uh, you feel like a sort of threatening presence grow around these three. You you get the feeling that these two aren't particularly fond of you. The, the one in blue looks over. Oh, um, yeah, pretty good move actually. The apples, huh? Yeah, that that would stop people like this. Motions at their companions. What? What do you mean, Captain? What? <laughs> looks back. I mean. Like, you could have tried a little bit harder to hold on to them. They're just apples, for God's sake. Look at this. They pick one up and, like, toss it in their hands. Now, I gotta wonder, why you feel confident enough to pull something like that around us? It was an accident. We've said it yeah, once. I'm really we'll sorry. say it again. We'll apologize if you want it. Hmm. Captain starts to think, I don't know if an apology is necessarily enough. Cassie's just standing there, like, looking apologetic. <laughs> you feel like the, the situation has redirected itself. You did manage to absolutely free those two from what would have been a pretty tight situation, but how do you find yourself in that situation? Cassius, this is this has been a running theme of today. You're sort of finding I feel like out. this is a running theme of his life, but yeah. yeah. like, you've got, uh, you've got, feels like, bad this... that this girl is involved, I think. You've got this, like, building feeling of, like, man, ob objective detachment as you're like, oh, is this, is this what every day is going to be like? And then you get, you start to, as, as you look back and forth between the Tempest, you were clearly trying to do something, you're not quite sure what. Intimidate you, me or something. Yeah, you start to feel a building presence that you're absolutely sure is not part of your everyday routine. And here's the real result of, uh, here's the real result of, uh, what you call it, rolling apple on this. You feel, <laughs> you feel eyes upon you, and a voice calls out from atop a nearby building. Stop right there! Deep and booming, it resounds throughout the, uh, throughout the entirety of the haunted district. Huh, <laughs> now I know what you might be wondering. Who is that man? Did he climb all the way up there? Did he wait for the sun to get in exactly the right position so he could enshadow his face? The answer to all these three questions is yes. He leaps down and rolls. You feel Frelia speak up next to you. The answer to what is his name is yes. He rolls across the ground, sending up a wave of apples landing on the other side. Now, I was about to heroically jump in here and save my boys, but you two already did it for me. That was pretty impressive. You two are it legit. Was... He points at you two in the back. <laughs> it was an accident, he says, and he closes his one good eye like he's trying to wink. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely an accident, yes. The the Tempest guards look back and forth between you guys. Who the hell is this? Glad you asked. Name's Galav the Great. I run the punks around this side of town. And you Wait, were I thought you said your name was yes. <laughs> Everyone turns and looks at him. Yes! <laughs> That's right, my name is Galav the Great. Nods along with this. Oh my god, he's insufferable. Frelia speaks from next to you. Cassius yes, gives a small nod. <laughs> As I was saying, I run the I run the youth groups, the gangs, and all the punks on this side of town. And you messing with my boys just won't do. You two in the back, though. You're cool. You stuck up for my boys. Temporarily, you're both promoted to, to, to my boys. Boy one, boy two. Frelia speaks up. I, no, do not call me a boy. Oh, yeah, understandable, actually. Okay. Rolling that back, you can be boy two, girl one. Can, no, still, still bad. Still awful. Wait, I was boy one? One? She's like her her entire eyebrow knits. You're right. I, I shouldn't be so weird and gendered about all of this. He's rubbing his temples. Okay, how about champ or sport? Does that work for you? No, you're just patronizing me. Cassius, say something to this lunatic. <laughs> so, like, what's your deal? Can you stop, you know, saying Never. things about my friend? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, not you... stop in general. Just the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you made the mistake of stepping into my territory. He points at the three of them with three entire fingers that bend in entirely different directions. Oh, boy. Look at you. 
can can we stop with the antics? Can we just go back to the vague promises of violence? No, 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 you don't want the antics to stop. The second the antics stop is the second the gloves come off. And you don't want that. Oh, you're telling me what I want and don't want right now. Uh, the guard, the guard reaches down and picks up their weapon. What I want right now is to kick the crap out of all of you guys. <laughs> Cassius, who has begun picking up apples. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I can get us out of this situation. All you need to do is act really, like, confused for the next bit. Can you do that? Of course. <laughs> I'm confused about everything every day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> she she grins at you. <sighs> Exhales. Well, I didn't want to do this, but I am Fralia. Current Archbishop of the Abbey of Indigo. They all stop and turn. Galab stops and turns. Wait, what? Hold on. That's way Wait, more what, impressive what? what I was going on about. To Wait, for real? <laughs> <laughs> she looks up with kind of like a, like a, you're doing great look. <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm, I'm one of the only clergy assigned to this city. So I'm technically the Archbishop. To Wait, cause is trouble... that why we were getting the, the donations for the church? <laughs> you're doing so good. You're doing so great. Your genuine is so your your confusion is so genuine. She's grinning at you. Now, these are I suppose my associates and they are assisting me in providing important goods for the church, and if you cause a problem here, it will be a factional affair, not you bossing around ordinary citizens. So stand aside and let my friend collect his apples. They'll fucking back off actually. <laughs> <sighs> he starts wandering forward and picking up apples. Thank you very much. Galav looks around. Wait, wait, wait. So it's just, it's resolved right that? No scraps? No brawls? I don't even get to throw it. You know what? This is better. <laughs> he takes a step back. Everyone takes a hot moment and recollects all the apples. And so, with that, I bid you good day. The blue captain takes a step forward. I don't know about that. Something about you is kind of frustrating. I said good day! Frelia grabs you and Galav and starts to just walk. <laughs> I take this apple and I toss it at the guard. <laughs> you can have it. Not like an aggressive one, just like a here, take this. Sorry about the, the thing. <laughs> they they catch it and scoot away. Okay, that was that was pretty good. Cool lie back there. It's not a lie, I'm telling the truth. So that I will say that genu that that genuine acting was no, just genuinely I'm confused. Are you really? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, I yeah. I guess I guess I kind of thought you knew. Yeah, I. Nah, I just come to the cafe because it's nice. <laughs> That's uh, your 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 holiness. <laughs> Go up, tries bowing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't you don't need to treat me like that. I'm technically like. I, I'm, I'm only an apprentice, it's just there aren't any other bishops here, so... Mm. <laughs> ah, so it's like, any rank is a rank when there's no one else. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. She seems, she seems kind of tired. Um, you travel further into the city and go to... Oh, is this why and you said there are no... I'll, I'll talk to you about that after the session. Yes. <laughs> oh no, I feel bad. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, for for what it's worth, I will release the character gen packet at the at the start of this. And one of the factions people could choose was the church. And if you chose to associate yourself with the church, the story would have changed. No one did, and because no one did, Freli is here. <laughs> She's the by herself. Yep. <laughs> I, I already had my character, so I didn't get to pick. Yep. <laughs> and, but I told Jade just the other day before we started that I didn't know about Freli or anything. I was like, if I had not been playing Cassie's, I probably would have picked the church. Yep. So now I feel bad because it's like she's by herself. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> she she continues to run. Why? Cassie's is an independent. Sorry, somebody <laughs> in chat asked. So to ask you guys, uh, why why did you help my boys? Oh, I fucking hate Tempest. <laughs> oh, awesome, cool. <laughs> uh, I actually have, I have actually helped the punks before. Oh my god, uh, so we, hold on. 
I Fred mostly hair. hang out over by, uh, what's the name of it? It's like Shrine Street. Red hair hangs out near Sh Oh my god, Red! Yeah, I've, I've heard about you! He, he stops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, yeah, Um, there are rumors going around about you. They say oh, you, like, appear in the dead of night to, like, do some badass stuff. Really? Like, yeah, uh... It's like the badass stuff that other people can't do, like, like, electrician work and, like, helping uh, people. Yeah. There's a lot of old ladies and, like, young, young couples that just, like, start in their lives in Shrine. Oh, hell yeah! So it's like, they don't know what they're doing, so you gotta kinda help them out. There's nothing more badass than helping the young and elderly. <laughs> like, he glitters. Like, you can tell this man is genuinely impressed by you. That stunt you pulled earlier, that was... That was no simple maneuver. You have the trained instincts of a fighter. I can tell. People keep saying Cassius is a fighter. Is this something people do? People are like, you're a fighter. He's not a fighter. <laughs> and I feel like at this point, people keep being like, dude, you, I want to fight you. Let's fight and shit. And like, you're a fight. And he's like, guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> How do you... How do you genuinely react to this person complimenting your fighting skills? Like, how do you, how do you physically, what tell do you give? He's like, he's like, you're a fighter, I can tell, and Cassius does like a, like, like, I can't, I have an expression on my face. <laughs> like, <laughs> li like, like, lip raise, like, <laughs> like, scrunched eyebrows, like, mmm. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not a look I particularly enjoy. Um, actually, I feel kind of guilty. It's, it's like a it's like a sad dog's looking at me. Please stop. <laughs> You're making me feel awful. <laughs> she actually stop. retracts. I feel like violence is not how things should resolve. I can do it. Not my ideal solution. Hmm. That's... That's the way it should be. Frelly and not right? Like, everybody's so down to fight, and, like, if that's, like, sometimes when you're dealing with Tempest, it's gotta be a fight, right? But you can, like, protest, and you can talk to people, and you can write mean graffiti on their windows instead of fighting them. Oh my god, are you promoting mean graffiti, too? Oh, yeah, I give, uh, there was, there's was. there been a couple times where some of the punks have come around and been, like, you know, after you guys go, like, graffiti up some of the Tempest like outposts right and it's like obviously they're still on the run so it's like here come hide in my creepy apartment building for a little bit nobody that, will look at here that's you he like he seems visibly like his his fists are balled up he's like he's a few feet back and it's just glittering looking at you red i didn't realize you were the one quietly supporting us all along on shrine street i owe I you let let me buy you a drink let me buy you food I, I, I'm out, I'm not out, but I'm a little low on juice boxes. So if you want to pay for those, I'll take it. Done and done, what flavor? Grape. Oh, the best one, okay. Yeah. <laughs> also not the sagely. rarest, I'll have to work really hard for this. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll get them to you. I've got eyes and ears everywhere, you know? Yeah. Also, make sure that those kids, when look, if they're at Shine, Shrine Street, they've probably made a wrong turn already. So if they <laughs> end up there, then it's a problem. I think they need to get educated on the back roads a little bit better. That makes sense. I've been telling them to use the abandoned, overgrown district. It's sort of yeah, it's right there. Yeah, I think they get lost. Um, I'm sorry if they go your way. I'll generally yeah. try to knock some sense into them. It's cool. It's if they end up at Shine, like at my street, right, like my area, then the, they made a wrong turn and they just need to kind of go to the right or the left, and they'll <laughs> end up in the they'll end up in the overgrown district. I just it's like I can only tell a couple of them, you know, the ones I see. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll I'll tell them to. God, I'll tell them to tell them to do better. Really, Red, you're saving me here. Uh, good luck, both of you. Um, Thanks. he like he puts up a hand and um starts to starts to run away. You you get the feeling that like all that hust like bluster from earlier sort of faded away the second he 
it came to talking about actual, like, resistance. He... You look at this guy. He's built like a brick shit house. He's, he's huge. He is, he is a wall. He is a fridge. And at first, you got the impression that might be all there is to him. But, like, there was a genuine glint in his eye when it came to talking about, like, fighting back against Tempest. And he really actually is trying to fight. He, he is. And he seemed genuinely grateful. So even without an empathy roll, as, as the dude runs away, I'm going to give you a bond up with Galav. He... He genuinely, you got a crit 20, you saved his boys, and you do good work for him. I see no reason we're for on, you to figure the shit same out more. Goal. Cassius yeah. also wants to fight against Tempest. Like, he doesn't fucking like them. He wants yeah. them out of here. They do nothing for the people but hurt. You, um, furthermore, you're going to unlock one of what are called, uh, Galav's locks. They are hidden facts about a character that you can't figure out through simple description. Galav's first lock is, he's brighter than he seems. It, like, maybe all of that, like, Galav the Great, you're my boy's shit is a shtick. Um, maybe there's something else going on in there. You feel pretty confident in this conclusion at this point, And you feel like you... It's like, it has to have a kind, like, if you, if you're just cool and serious all the time, if you make a mistake, it's like a big deal. So if you're goofy, yes. if you're goofy, <laughs> then it's like, you can still fuck up. <laughs> the expectations are low so when you do cool shit cool shit is cool shit when you fuck up that's what they were expecting Cassius feels like he actually understands Galab a little too well <laughs> he's like yeah okay I, I get this one uh, Frelius sees, sees him run off he's high energy but I guess he means well there's a lot of people like that here nowadays it's exhausting but we gotta keep doing our best right yep Nobody you else too. is gonna do it. <laughs> she she smiles. I like you. Why didn't I talk to you earlier? Cassius sputters, like knowing full well that's probably his fault. <laughs> Cassius you... only talks to people when he's helping them. <laughs> you head over <laughs> to the Rajin <laughs> district. Yeah, no, that yes. that tracks. Oh, let me drop Cassius really quick. He vanished for me from the last map. Uh oh. Oh my <laughs> fucking godlike rolls so f this has been so good so far. Holy shit. I'm scared that if we keep talking about it, they'll go away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so you enter the 13th ward. It's the, the Raushin district, but most of the architecture was it was originally sort of rackus ad adjacent architecture. It was these long sweeping columns and beautiful, beautiful filigree, but it's been repurposed to have sort of a more nostalgic air for the Rao Jin. You've been to this district a lot. You quite like it here. It's very nice. Um, the area is gorgeous. The community. Yeah, it's got a tight knit sense of community. It's gorgeous and the people are friendly. Oh boy. So I'm- You're so like, breathable he yeah says. no i completely agree this side of the of old town is so 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 nice i'm I'll, i will admit she kind of looks down i i get kind of shy coming over here because i know that this this land used to be the churches i'm like obviously we we gave it up so that everybody here could have a house but like i i'm afraid that people are worried that i'm gonna come and reclaim it or something I think that if you talk to them, they'll know. You know, it's like, having good relationships is better than having vague relationships. Huh. Yeah, I guess that's true. She smiles at you. You you pass by the Rajin district and travel to the Cathedral district. I just want to look at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so pretty, Jay. This map is gorgeous. I'm, I'm very proud of this one. Go to the Cathedral district. Also, for the record, every time you see an exterior building that has an interior, you can go into every single building in this game. It's like that fucking video game, dude. Yeah! <laughs> you go, and finally make it to the Cathedral District. You're on one of the arms of Old Town, and uh, not many people come here, but it's sort of picked up some more steam lately. I feel like okay. because people this don't come way. here, that's yeah. happening. That makes sense. Um... I like to think part of what I'm doing might might be helping him out, but yeah. Um, what there's this. 
Well, ever since I took over the, um... Ever since I took over the Abbey here from my mentor, I've been trying to sort of make the place a little more homey for everyone. Like, Rackus's wisdom is supposed to spread to everyone near and far evenly, you know? Like, mm -hmm. the philosophy, even if you don't believe in our god, can help improve people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of the most important parts of that philosophy, she says, opening the door. Is it? is making sure everybody gets fed. She oh. walks across and there is a... So at first, it is an attack on the senses. Uh, there is so much fucking pink in this room. There is enough pink to kill a person. And uh, you you look around and... No, this is a soup kitchen. It's just a very pink soup kitchen. She She walks over, starts unloading the groceries. You, you look and I will yeah, abuse him. <laughs> this is a this is a combination, sort of like um, like it's a it's a soup kitchen and hostel. You look you look over here and like yeah, there are, there are people sleeping in the beds. It's clear like this is this is a place that exists. You've you've heard about this once or twice. Uh, Rackus is supposed to be a benevolent god, and holy shit, they seem to be practicing what they preach here. Oh, this is. It's like really pink, but it's actually kind of nice for a soup kitchen. <laughs> I feel at the at the phrase of this is really pink. She's she freezes up, clearly very self conscious about it, and then is like, but it's kind of nice. It's just like, oh, you. <laughs> it's like very like clean and like I think you could go for adding some green because green complements pink. Oh oh oh! I've, I've been that. told. <laughs> She, she she grabs your hand and actually leads you through this door and into Well, if you're looking for green, nothing better than the cathedral. Oh, Motions yeah. around. There are a bunch of indoor trees just growing up into the roof. This is really cool. Has <laughs> been in here before. Cassius is not actually. Not many reasons to come over to the Cathedral District. You know, I've been like in the area a lot, but I've never actually come in here. This place is really nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Rekus is the blooming god, after all. We wouldn't be appreciating their uh, teachings fully if we didn't, you know. I say we. If I didn't have a hand for horticulture. And you as she's. You run this I... whole place by yourself? Mm hmm nods very seriously and fuck yeah this is starting to make sense you you remember taking a look at the old a, a nostalgic article written in a, a newspaper called the grapevine which has has a weighty feeling in your chest when you read from it um yeah ever it's since like yeah over the last few months someone's shown up and really sort of taken the church to task apparently in indomitable singular spirit who drives forward the interests of the Abbey in the area all by their lonesome. They decline to be named, but yeah, you're looking at them. This Wait. this person in front of you, this this diminutive puffball apparently runs, runs service, runs the soup kitchen, runs the diner that you're aware of, and performs outreach to the various communities. Hey, if you need help with, like, the soup kitchen or, like, the t getting in touch with the various communities nearby and stuff, I can help you with that. I'm not, like, super religious, so I can't help with all the other stuff. <laughs> but I can help you, like, you know, with the other stuff. <laughs> her her eyes light up. Are you are you serious? Like, I've, I've got one or two people who help out, and they're, they're good, but, like, not, not enough. Um... I, I, yeah, I could I could always use more hands. Hold on, you you help me out. Let's uh, come with me. She she motions again, <laughs> and you like you walk out, and there are these beautiful cherry trees just resting She's over in you. Awe of how fucking nice this place is. You go, especially from the fucking assault on the senses that is all that pink. 
Yeah. <laughs> you you go back outside and she she scoots across the street rather rapidly. You see He's You see to the bridge to uh the bridge to uh seaside up there just like laid out in front of you. Um you could you could go to the bustling side of the city if you so wished, but eh, no time this for it Cassie's. really right now. He yeah. does not want to go to the fucking... Yeah, that side of town. And she... T oh, God, you oh, duplicated. Goodness. There's two of you. And you go inside. And you find yourself in another. Yeah, you, you were ready for it this time. You fucking graced your eyeballs. <laughs> she... 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 Like, you, you are hit with the pink in the face. And uh, she, she runs over. Do you like tea? Uh, yeah. She fiddles around behind and, like, quickly prepares the cup, and you notice actual, like, energy running up and down her hands as she does so. And, um... Cassie's kind like, of, like, hovering, like, he wants to come over, but he, he doesn't know if it's cool for him to, like, enter, because this seems to be, like, her bedroom. She, <laughs> she, like, she, she pat-pats the, the, uh pillow next to her. She's like, come on, sit down, it's fine. Okay. He needs permission to enter these things. He does not feel comfortable entering people's private. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Cassius. And thank you for consistently coming and visiting um, visiting my diner. Uh, Dude, it's... I'm gonna be honest. I freaking love that place. <laughs> <laughs> she beams at you. Well, I did not realize you were running it by yourself along with all this other stuff. You need to, like, sleep <laughs> I get, I get plenty of sleep. Um, the, I don't know how to put this. Um, I'm an awkward person, and I find it hard to talk to people, so I don't, and I focus on my work instead. Yeah, I can vibe with that. <laughs> she, she looks, she looks down and pours you some tea into a very pink cup. Um, she's, she like, she looks at you, Cassius, and goes. Like, okay, I'll admit what you did back there was, I, I wouldn't quite go as far as what Galav said, where it's, you're like a martial artist or anything, but that was pretty deft. You you can think pretty quickly on the spot. Um, I didn't expect anyone to, like, really hop to the defense of the citizens. That's so new. It's nice. Yeah, I... I try my best because i feel like there isn't really very many people trying to help out other people well said she toasts uh she's going to try to empathize with you give me do me a favor and do your keep red roll to die she's she's going to roll a this plus a this plus a this okay she doesn't get to ban any of your colors um so how do you react to this? With what attribute all out of all of them? Uh, and then just just talk for a bit. Give her a sample. Let me see. What attribute is he going to reply to that statement with? The issue is I know which stat is his self worth stat, and I'm yeah. like. Uh. <laughs> she she actually like sees that you're getting a little uncomfortable with that, and like. It's just like. It's not that he's uncomfortable. He he really likes helping people. Yeah. He does not necessarily think he deserves praise for doing it. So yeah, she she like she kind of senses that really quick and like um actually sort of backs off and tries a different angle. Well, okay. So this is this is gonna sound rude. You seem like a busybody too. Uh, if if you were a busybody, which I suspect you might be. I am. She points at herself. What part of the city needs the most help? Old Town, probably. Like the residential residen residential district. Okay, Old Town. Um, I'm doing my best to reach out to there, but it's hard to convince all the elderly to sort of make the way all the way over here to the soup kitchen. It's a long walk for them, and I don't know... Yeah. Hmm. Uh, if I... I, I can talk to them, but I don't think that it's a good idea to make them walk all the way out there. I think a better idea would be to ask what places are available over there 
to open up one, and if anybody would be okay with volunteering to, like, keep track of it. Okay. Together, things will work out easier. <laughs> she she nods along. Now, with the change in approach, you you also probably changed the attribute that you were responding with. The personal yep. the personal quality. She's gonna guess blue for you. Nope. Thought it so. Yellow. Fantastic. She um she she nods along. Okay. Very well. Um I'll I'll do my best to reach out and put down roots in the area. Thank there's you so some, much for everything, Cassius. Of course. There's some younger couples who might be more interested in, in like, helping, like, actually, like, monitor and serve and stuff. But there's a lot of old ladies out there that have a lot of free time that love cooking and stuff that would be happy to, like, make the food and stuff. Oh my god, it's, okay. It's, like, a smaller community because it's not, like, the entirety of Old Town is super close, but, like... Hmm. The people will get close if given the opportunity, I feel. Good sh- good, yeah, you, uh, she almost- mm. Curses. Good stuff. <laughs> I'll- I'll do my best- I'll do my very best to reach out. You sense the- You sense the similar, like, she displayed a faux regality for a second when she told those- the- the Tempest people to fuck off. Um, and it comes back for a moment, and then she goes back to pouring tea, and is just back to normal. <laughs> I think it's... I think you're doing a really good job giving people a place to, like, be here in the this district, because it was, like, really empty for a while. And I feel like having a, a district that isn't super, like, overly populated, that's, like, quiet and not, like, the bustling city that is okay to be in will give people a place to be when they need to be somewhere like that, if that makes sense. She she smiles and nods along to every word. Uh, that, that sounded like an empathize. Give me a roll. Okay. That's a roll to die, right? Roll to do. Roll to do, okay. Big ol' red stab. Okay. You just, you just get to ban one of these. I'll hit this button. Pick which one to ban. Yellow. Yellow. Okay, cool. She she actually looks like a little forlorn for a second. Like you you notice her her eyes actually stone up. The city's a little overwhelming. I think a lot of people sort of lose sight of themselves amidst all this mess. Um, what's left for people? I I, I try to I try to push. Um. I try to push the, the philosophy of Rackus. I, I do my best on that regard, but it doesn't matter if we can't feed people. Like, if everyone's suffering under this factional rule, it's, what's the point of it? Like, right. just trying to... I guess our focus, my focus for now, she rubs her eyes. It isn't, it isn't to tell sermons or win more people over to the faith like the church expects me to do. It's to just make sure people here see tomorrow. Not because of violence or anything, just from having a full belly. And, like, I know there are a lot of people who will want you to do things a different way, but I want to tell you this, and no, in no way other than my own genuineness, <laughs> I personally appreciate that. <laughs> like, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I personally appreciate what you are doing <laughs> fantastic what color do you think she responded with blue dead on you uh hold on i got a thing <laughs> i gotta i gotta post the thing you successfully guess her reaction with your fucking 100% accuracy, and get another bond up. <laughs> she 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 nods along with that, and you feel like you got a better sense of her as a person. Um, I'm going to give you for this uh, her blue attribute, which is dying. Dying. Yes. Like D Y I. Oh, D Y I N G. Yep. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, everything okay over here? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you, you get her blue attribute. There you go. <laughs> and 
almost like, almost on cue, she, she stands up. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, she looks around. I forgot to lock up the diner. I forgot to lock up the diner. She runs over and grabs her keys. I'm gonna... I'm supposed to watch the soup kitchen. Um, Do you I'm want gonna... me to watch the soup kitchen for you while you go lock up the diner? Uh, uh I can... Or do you want me to go lock up the diner while you watch the soup kitchen? Uh, yeah. She, like, she's weighing things in her head. Yeah. Um, like, she's she's clearly processing something. Um, well, okay. I guess I, I guess I trust you more with my, like, personal life and what I'm doing just because I like it rather than, like, my perfect. Yeah, lock up the diner. <laughs> she hands it. you the keys. <laughs> she, gotcha. she had a minor philosophical quandary about that, and you you want I that assume out. it's the people versus herself kind of thing. Like, yeah, am like I which trust one him do with I the trust the well-being of yeah. people or the or, well-being of me? Yeah, and like based on what you've said, weirdly she trusts you more on a personal level as a kindred soul. So she's like, yeah, no, I can I can trust him with that. He'll do a good job. He also knows it. So yeah, you um, you you quickly run out and you you head towards the diner. Let's hop back over here. And doink doink. Cassius makes friends. Cassius <laughs> sure does. Holy shit. <laughs> You, uh, you, you run your every way back to- I want you to know, Jay, every yeah. time I see this grapevine asset, my heart hurts. <laughs> you, uh, you start, you start to walk towards, um, I have a second well, question. you're, you're hustling, this a, yeah? This is an out of character question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna message you, DM okay. the whisper. Uh-huh. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna DM it to you. Because <laughs> I have a guess on something that I can't say to the public. Oh, okay, interesting. I I'll just write it in here. <laughs> mm. Let me see. It's in the general chat. Yes. It's it's this one? Yes. I fucking knew it. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, 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 that was for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's that's yes, just yes. You you run down through the uh through the Raujin district. You run through the second part of the Hunted district, and you run all the way back here. And uh, you you see a guy running towards you with a gigantic crate. Oh, buddy, you're almost r running as fast as I am. Where where to? Uh, gotta lock up a diner. <laughs> oh, okay. He's got a crate, like not just a box, a literal fucking crate. <laughs> Where it's are you taking a... that? I mean, to you. To... Is that? It is all grape juice. <laughs> you wanna? You must be very strong. <laughs> Thank you. I actually work on my muscles every single day. I appreciate you noticing. He lifts up. He lifts up the box. So I realize, um, you're probably busy. I'm not very busy, but you seem like someone who might be. Where do you want this? <laughs> uh, if you... Hold on, put it down for a second. Thunk! <laughs> Tries to lift it up. It's... You... Like a little... Like a little... Hmm. Yes, you're very strong. Unfortunately, I am not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't put yourself down like that. There are other forms of strength, like brain strength. And, uh, like, like, charisma strength? Counting's a strength, too. He goes down and just starts counting off shit on his fingers. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, I, I do live on sh on shrines. It's so hard for me to say Shrine Street, because yeah. it's my sister. <laughs> yep. Um, so if you want to leave it by the apartment building there, I'm just unsure of how, my, how I'm going to get this up to the stairs. Because <laughs> I oh. live on the third, second floor. You live on the third, yeah. He he looks down at it. Oh, that's not a problem. Yeah, I could I could put it up on the third. Oh, you could probably split it into smaller boxes, or just take them all out and I, I yeah I'll, I'll get it to you. Don't worry about that. Do you live in the like nice apartment or the haunted one? You the live haunted, in the haunted one. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You didn't even have to tell me. <laughs> gotcha. He picks up the box. 
Real scared of ghosts, but not scared enough to not deliver some juice boxes. You have a good day, Red. <laughs> have a great day. His name's like Gala what? what was his Galab, name? yeah. Galab. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Friendly he, wave in passing. He takes off. It's actually a little shorter to cut. Um, he, he He's going to Shrine Street. It's a little faster for you to cut back up this way. Up, up? Yeah, if you go up, That's that will be... That's what I assumed. Yes, that will lead you to Main Street 3. Oh, fuck. There is a shortcut you can take that you're aware of. Do you want to take it? Yes. Okay. Cassius, you immediately go off the beaten path and into University Grounds. Ooh, yay! Um, oh, you... I have another question <laughs> for the GM. Oh, interesting. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, you are you are batting batting a thousand on this one. <laughs> okay. You find yourself in a place that almost feels out of time and space, and yeah, it's it's pretty weird here, but kinda cool. Um, I think you've he stopped sprinting and started light jogging because he yeah. ran out of stamina a little bit. He's like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna just casually jog. <laughs> you you run through you run through this over mushroomed area. It's, it's really nice. It uh, it reminds you of someone you're not not quite sure who, and you you make your way um make your way back. Is it a place. someone I know or somebody I used to know? Someone you know. Um, okay. I'm deciding on if I need to be sad or not. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not sad about this one. Um, and you move to one of the one of the more abandoned paths in the university. Um, this is like this is on university grounds, but yeah, you see the old abandoned schoolhouse up there. You've scoped the place out once or twice. It's creepy. Oh man, I want to go in there, but I have responsibilities. <laughs> Do you want to poke your head in? Just see if anything's going on? I can show you the map. Yeah, sure. It's like, okay. kind of, it's like I feel like he a little bit patrolling. Like, yeah. A little bit. So. Little bit. Yeah. It's like, also, don't the punks hang out at the university, right? Yes. On their off time, so he's a they little do. bit, like, checking out. This is a, this is actually a popular punk hideout. That's what I and thought. And now that you met the punk's boss, <laughs> you feel like you get them a little bit more, uh, but yeah, you, you poke your head in, and I'm not going to put you on the map. You can just see the inside. And it doesn't look like anyone's in here right now, but you get the feeling, like, based on the way the dust hangs, people were in here earlier. And yeah, you, you, you take a look. two kids that ran off? Maybe. Um, and yeah, you you come back, and yeah, you, you, took a, you took a quick look around and decide to move on. And the sun starts to actually peak down. You, you're making good time, but like... God, Indigo's big. This is like, this is like one of the longest stretches, and you're starting to understand why the um, why exactly the uh, <laughs> the cathedral district is so abandoned. Far. Um. You... Well, I can now tell you one of Cassius's goals is the like, uh, you know, in like. Uh, Xenoblade, where you can like remake yeah. Colony Six and make it nice. Oh! Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna get like plants, and decorations, and give them to her so she can make the cathedral district nice. Oh! And to sweep up like the dirt and shit <laughs> on the ground. That's perfect. Yeah, you you should head in this direction. That's the way you should go. That's the way to her place. That's the way to her place. That's the way to East Street. It's it's a shortcut. You see the university up this way, a big towering old building, but you don't have business there right now. I'm not a student. <laughs> yeah, and as you as you start to exit the um exit the woods, the sun starts peeking its way down, and I'm gonna give you a loading screen before East Street. Um I cannot wait. Okay, I'll, I'll say that after. <laughs> I can't say some of this stuff. <laughs> okay. I just want to see everybody else's session zeros. I want to see yeah. how how frequently some of us should have been on these maps together. <laughs> That's the most fun part of this, I think. 
And Cassius, you you make it by as the as the sunset starts to set in. That's a it's a sequence of words I just said. Um, it's a lot of S sounds. Yeah, and you start to get nostalgic actually because you know this place. Um, oh boy, East Street. You you, you kind of try to avoid it, but um, this is your old precinct right up there. Oh, that's the building that used to be. Yep. That's the. You you feel a lot of familiar sensations running up and down your spine as you look at it, and. It's the thing I feel like it like, it always it, no matter how many times he comes to here, it always gives him the like chills. It always like, mm. gives him the chills. Like the sad chills. Yeah. He can't he can't help but feel like bittersweet about it. Yeah. Even when, even on good days it's bittersweet, and on bad days it's like awful. Yeah, exactly. I'm assuming this is where I want to be. The flower diner? <laughs> yeah. That's the building I'm assuming me... I'm going to. Oh, hold on, I've, I'm actually on a different map prepping something. I will hop back. Uh, this yes. One? This this is the building that you are so goddamn used to. This is your favorite diner. It's, um... <sighs> You've been here a lot. Like, um... It... It has that same comforting air that Frelia herself does, but, like, imagine that in food form, and that's sort of what you get here. It's very nice. Um, and, yeah, you you slowly open the door, head inside, and it's, it's quiet in here. <laughs> Fucking no one's been inside, probably all day. She left the place unlocked, but unmanned. He's gonna go through... He's gonna enter, and he's gonna go through and make sure, like, the stove is turned off <laughs> and yep. stuff. Like, you, wa Samaritan. you walk inside, and you see somebody familiar head down on the table sleeping. Oh, Arch. <laughs> <laughs> this place is so fucking cute, by the way. He walks in, he looks like he's going for Arch, and then he sees. <laughs> you see your friend. <laughs> Beans down, like, hey. <laughs> he's always <laughs> so scared. He's it's gonna hate him. <laughs> the kitten stares at you majestically. It it has an aura of tranquility and superiority. It looks at you as if not only granting you permission but requesting pats. <laughs> he gives it pats. It's like he, every time he walks up, he's like hands up to chest, like squiggly lines mouth. Like big, <laughs> like big, like big sparkly eyes. Like he's like, am I allowed? Am I allowed? <laughs> Every time he comes in here and approaches this creature, he's like, can I? And then he waits for permission, and then he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you can feel its sense of superiority. You also you. You normally don't get a condition exactly like this, where it's like the diner's empty. Normally there's a lot of people here, and you're like, you are usually, like, taking orders from somebody who's, like, clearly overworked for Frelia. This place is only open for an hour or two, and the kid in sits in the corner and watches everybody imperiously. You don't have a chance to stand one-on-one -on -one with it. Arch doesn't count. <laughs> She's passed out. <laughs> He's having the time of his life. He's like, <laughs> he's like, to it and like look, and I'm sure most of the time it like looks at him coldly. And he's like, yes, okay, I understand. I understand. <laughs> and he walks away. So sometimes it will allow, and he's like, yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, like they, they clearly appreciate the fact that you have like you've brought the keys, and like after after they have received enough pets, they stand up and walk away sort of turning their back and, like, go and rest behind the counter, clearly watching the place. He is going to come in and make sure, very cautiously, because you can, he knows what it's, he knows what's up. <laughs> He's gonna look at the stove and make sure it's off. <laughs> yeah, you, you do a quick once-over on the place, like, this sink is on, like, a little bit, and you flick it off, and... Uh, the kid and nods at you like good job <laughs> um I'll come back over yeah as you approach the cash register slightly you feel the gaze intensify and then as you walk away it relaxes <laughs> he has no plans on doing anything devious he is kind of a cop 
<laughs> he, he'll do a once over of like the plates and stuff and take them to the back and yeah. stuff. Just you, like, you know, pick it up, make sure it's not like, you know. You, gross. yeah, you, you put everything in the back. Do you wash the dishes? I will wash the dishes for her. Cassius, oh my god, you <laughs> fucking sweetheart. Okay. Cassius proceeds to spend a good, like, 10, 15 minutes washing the dishes from somebody who asked him a favor, someone he has done nothing but favors for all day. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the the kitten looks at you approvingly, overwhelmed by your raw good energy. <laughs> You get the feeling you have earned the respect of this creature. <laughs> Cassius is filled with a joy that he cannot describe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there was a bond up for the kitten, you would receive it. <laughs> <laughs> I do the dishes. I get the good boy stamp. <laughs> you get the good boy stamp. You do the dishes. Oh my I just God. feel like Cassius is like... <laughs> Cassius is like, right? This lady does so much i it's not even like a this is the right thing to do it's a i'm sure she'll be so delighted when she sees the dishes are done tomorrow and it will make her yep. happy so i will do it <laughs> <laughs> it's something if it's like a nice little surprise that he's leaving for her for later <laughs> <laughs> at some point arch wakes up and you just feel her staring at you like he she doesn't very, say very much so like i will leave arch to last so she can get as much rest as she wants because he knows that she likes to sleep <laughs> Yeah, she's just watching you at a certain point, content to not interrupt. And, like, eventually you do finish. I leave them, I turn the water off. <laughs> he knows she's awake, but he comes around the corner and looks at her. Oh, you're up. <laughs> she slowly nods up against the table, which involves banging her chin on the table. <laughs> she slowly reclines back in the chair. Yes, I was waiting for service for quite some time, but it seems like they might be closed. Yes, I am here to lock the place up because she forgot. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry then. Um, if she's you want, slowly- you can come with me next time I'm over here. That sounds nice. She smiles. Hmm. She looks at you. Something seems different. Like, different, different. She looks at My your face. Looks? <laughs> yes, those are those are intact as usual, but <laughs> she She made she that joke and then she says yes and he's like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> she focuses in. Hmm. It's like a different air or aura. Do you um Do you remember the day we met? Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I met you, but that was not a great day for me. <laughs> <laughs> she nods. You looked half mad, and the rest went out the window when you found, um, that. She points at the badge that Cassius probably still has on him. Yeah, he probably keeps it, like, in inside his coat, like, on, like, an inner coat pocket, because it's, like, the kind of thing that if you wear, you get fucking, like, killed on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the exactly. Fucking, the, the merc groups come, and they kill him, and so he keeps <laughs> it on him, but, like, away. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, it was my concern for quite some time how to help you out of that predicament. There was always that air of sadness, tragedy, just floating around you like a cloud. But it seems like that cloud's lifted to a certain extent. She genuinely, her mouth curls into a smile. You haven't, you haven't seen that before, actually. I'm happy for he you. He sees her smile, and he is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> he is very much so other people are happy, I'm happy. Cassius, realizing that, you you feel, you feel a sort of warmth spread throughout your chest, and like, with the way you spent today, you, you think back on all that you've done for people, like, oh man, I stopped a riot. I like, I met the leader of the punks, that was fun. Oh, I met the leader of the Tempest. Oh, I probably stopped her from killing some people. That was cool. Oh, I met the leader of the church, too. Oh, I'm connected to all the bigwigs in town now. And I... I helped all of them. Oh my god, I helped a lot of people in town today. And you... Him thinking he's just like, that's just the normal stuff he does, is just go around and help people like that. Yeah, and like, 
you're realizing this this compounding warmth it's it's been growing in you day by day by day and this this is your role in this city this is this is your job in indigo and you you feel something start to sort of reawaken in your chest and you've had this happen before sometimes the memories come and they're not so pleasant they show you visions of things you'd rather not see but this time based on everything you've done like your your hands are all pruned out from doing the dishes all this acting as a catalyst to call out a memory well it's got to be something good right and you start to think back and yeah even before that night two years ago this is this is what you were doing this is how cassius lived his life there's no compromise on this front this is this is who you are and you feel this is who i am feel like you've regained a part of yourself and god thinking back on the apples thinking about your interaction with Cerisa, it moments of it might be sad or lame or like people might people might think you're a fighter when you're not even if it's pathetic you still do your best to help others even if it involves sniveling or crying or spilling apples everywhere you do your damnedest to make sure life is better for everyone else and that much is certain so cassius i'm going to based on the way you played this session reveal the true name of your class something you've held all along Something that to most people would be considered a badge of dishonor, but something that you wear proudly throughout your every action. Cassius, your class is two words. Wannabe hero. (laughs) And your chest puffs up with pride. (laughs) And with that, I think we can call the session there. (laughs) (sighs) <sighs> Holy fuck. Good goddamn work. Whew! <laughs> Dude, I love one boy, and his name is Cassius. Cassius is so fucking good! What the hell? <laughs> what is with that? The entire session, I'm like, Dude, he can't be this good. And then throughout the entire thing, I'm like, Oh no! He's so good! He just Holy wants shit. people to be happy. Like, he just <laughs> wants the people of the city of Indigo to be happy. Oh my god, he's, he's so beautiful. He's, ah, uh, I'm so, okay. Good work with the session, everyone. Good, like, good fucking, good everything. I've got, I've got no, like, I've got nothing to say other than I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And it not only delivered, it extremely exceeded absolutely everything I could have hoped for. Roma, you killed it! Holy shit! Thank you! (laughs) Oh, holy fuck. You know what I didn't realize? Hmm? We we got fan art. I didn't, that (laughs) did not actually fucking cross my mind. You sure did get some fan art. Thank you to Weeaboo Phil for making a Imgur for us. Holy fuck. Yeah, so this fan art that you're providing, you saw those loading screens. You saw how much I used them. This shit's going on that. Also, Uh, thank Mass for making the loading screens. (laughs) Yeah, uh, first up. I am looking forward to making more. Yeah. (laughs) And someone make the Imgur? Yep. Uh, Yes, absolutely. (laughs) But he could send out the Roma for me? Yeah, I'll start going through the list. Um, First up, from Nikorin, we have Cassius with his juice box. Oh, fantastic. He is making do with Apple. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then, from Actually Mars, we have a arch. (laughs) All frowns, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from Faust, we have another arch. <laughs> no full body, no problem, baby. Yeah. I like the stain on the shirt. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Accurate. Yep. That's in character. Yep. Another one from actually Mars, we have a child drawn by Max. A child. <laughs> Thank you for drawing my random child. Yeah. <laughs> and then from Drax... We have oh my Mary god, Cassius. this Cassius is so fucking cool. 
Yeah. Peace time. Peace out. I listen. I am just happy that it is. It is the year 2020, and now people are appreciating Cassius. Yeah. <laughs> this is the year of Cassius appreciation. Yes, they should. <laughs> then from middle, we have another Cassius with a juice box. Ah. Oh. the juice box. <laughs> yeah. Then from Lester, we have Arsh with a juice box. All juice, all the time. <laughs> Oh man, the, you got you even got the eyes on the side of the head right. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> then from Jasper. Oh, uh, that's a boy. Good <laughs> <a> boy. <laughs> then from Sour Badger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny because that's uh. what his face looks like most of the time. Like he <laughs> looks like that, but he acts like he does. <laughs> Uh, and from Mystic Lilybet. Yeah, there was a thing in the apartment building that I did that only some people caught, yeah. which I'm excited to see everyone go back. Yeah, go back and watch funny. the apartment building scene, see what happens. Yeah. Watch very closely. My favorite bit's that even Roma missed it, which was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I totally didn't see it, whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> then from actually, <laughs> from actually Mars, we got another arch. Oh, look at that arch. I love Arch so much. Yeah, <laughs> I love all of these friend. characters. Yeah, from actually Marge. Fun! Friendship, heck yes! The two C's, fantastic. <laughs> yep, another one from the Asper. Dude, he got so many friendships up. Oh, yeah. Cassius got everything correct, is the thing. Like, that minigame is hard as shit. He destroyed it! He just, he just rolled through! <laughs> And then Fuck. from that, Jasper, got a smiling boy. <sighs> you little crazy. <laughs> just a little. A little just bit, crazy. a little bit. Yep. And from the Crimson Flare. <laughs> There's We're besties, besties now. now. <laughs> Rank up. Uh, with friends like with here, you. you're feline good. <laughs> then from Yakorin. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Feed That's me her. Hamburger. <laughs> Feed me hamburger. <laughs> uh, then from Kieran. Yeah! Just Just sippy. Sippy. <laughs> oh, when you're in trouble, sippy quickly. Uh, then from actually Mars and Arcassius. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and then from Takio. <laughs> Yeah! There it is! Yeah! You and your fucking crit 20s! Dude, I rolled... You rolled like awesome. a monster and changed the plot already. Congrats! Yep. <laughs> and then from I Am Blue, uh, Cassius. Oh, yeah, good Cassius! Yeah. And then from Foss. <laughs> She's probably harmless, but god, that intro did not help her. She's... Probably not a problem. Don't worry about her. Alcott's I'm sure fine. She's, she's like well intended. <laughs> Cassius <Kenosius. laughs> has faith in everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Then from Lester, we have another Alcott. Oh, very, very cute. Oh shit, there's the complete design. Okay, so I, I gotta shout out the artists really quick. Missing did Frelia, Mask did Galab, Alcott was Heart, and Alcott. There's a lot to talk about her. Uh, she's great. Uh, just look look forward to it. <laughs> we'll yep, get to see more of her. And from actually Mars. Hell yeah! Absolute oh, yeah. cutie. Frelia is already one of my favorites. Then, she is she is a fucking cream puff. She's great. And from the Accord, another Frelia. Oh my god. That adorable. one is adorable. Oh my god, look at her little <laughs> nose. It's a bug. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and from Cabbage. Shit. Uh. Oh, yes. I, also, her Alcott's color scheme is fucking awesome. That Heart is, is so slaps. good. Heart is so good. <laughs> she also has my favorite uh, Bond up. I think out of everyone's, it's which is the hardest contest in the universe because they're all factually perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Then from Anna and G. Oh! Cassius. There it is. Big Feral. 
And then from actually Mars. <laughs> Durin, I mean Galav, Rebranko. <laughs> Durin, I mean Balthus, I mean Galav. Oh, fuck. What? <laughs> I dropped all my himbos, damn it. Durin <laughs> from Sour Badger. Who, little old me? <laughs> Die. <laughs> Stabs me. <laughs> Another one from Drax. We got all of those yeah. rounds ups. Aww. Oh my god, you guessed all of their respective elements. Yeah. <laughs> those are their Pokemon types. And from Lester. Favorite food. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> if if you could not guess, Nyx was and is a from a Fire Emblem was a test run for Arch. Like she just was. Yep. From Niasper. Oh my god, my heart. <laughs> she's so pink, and I love her, but so Jesus. Pink. <laughs> Cassius is slowly gonna be like, what if we put this plant here to break up the pink? <laughs> <laughs> Any anything else. Just anything. Has a heart else. attack. <laughs> <laughs> and from Takio. Yeah, it's in character. <laughs> of the great. He's ripped. Uh, unfortunately, this one from Cabbage did not get loaded properly. Oh. Yeah, I'll 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 go in. I'll go scroll through the uh, Discord and grab it, and after we're done with everything else. Oh my god. Yep. Then from Spacey There's Chase. There's also more. Holy shit. Yeah, from Spacey Chase, we got a Cassius. <laughs> oh, you know, it was an accident. Wonk. Mm. <laughs> One hundred percent means it. <laughs> you want yourself an admirer with that. <laughs> okay, then oh, from Cabbage, uh, we got the Galav. Oh, beautiful. That's Excellent. that's 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 a boy. That's a boy right there. <laughs> got his broken horn. Yeah. So yeah. From Brock the Hot Trainer. <laughs> oh my God. Nat 20 god. And then I think there's another one or two actually. Yep, from Mystic Lily Belt. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. I love this Cassius. Yeah, this one's really good. Holy shit. From uh, Spacey Chase, off screen Kieran. <laughs> Cassius. Can can touch, touch, touch? <laughs> Kieran <laughs> shakes his head yes, shakes his hand no. Cassius <laughs> respects his answer no matter what it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that was that's, that's fucking oh, the best. Time. Looks like that's it. So, so, with that, that is Forgotten Indigo first record. The very, yep. very first of this stream series. It was my absolute pleasure to share it with you guys. And like, Thank you for playing. Thank you, Roma, for going in with an open mind and, like, just rolling with the punches perfectly. I did not tell Roma that the game would start off with Cassius waking up for the first time. That was a curveball. Roma's just kind of a god. <laughs> so, like, yeah, everything, literally everything that evolved from all these characters meeting each other and what that means on the following day is not scripted. I have no idea where this campaign's gonna go. I just made a bunch of characters that have individual motivations, and doing things ambiently in the city empowers some people and depowers other people. Cassius's efforts today, though they might seem like small in perspective, actually changed the course of the campaign. There's no question about that. A riot was prevented. The church got more help. The punks got helped out of a tight situation. What does that mean? Well, we're going to find out. That's why we're playing this shit. And that's why I'm excited for this campaign. We're going to pick up with another day zero, probably in another two weeks, maybe three. And uh, we'll mm -hmm. be introducing a brand new PC on that day. So yep. look forward to that. And, and also, uh, yeah, of course, real quick, just to make sure everybody knows if you want to, since so many characters were met this session, uh, a lot of new oh things are getting added to the World Anvil, so uh, be sure to check in on there. That'll be updated very soon. And once again, if you, uh, if you, if you uh, get the nine dollar tier on the Patreon, you can play with the players and see everything that they could see. Yes, exactly. Um, I believe we've gotten every fan art, including the one that didn't load. So I think mm -hmm. we're good on that front. And yeah, play along with the players. And if you want to see Arch casual casual costume. 
go subscribe to, to Roma's Patreon. And uh, once again, I need to, I need, 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 need to thank every single artist that contributed to this. Um, this screen that you're looking at right now, all of this fantastic text work was done by Nico. It's incredible. The, the, the edition of First Record was done by Mask. The Bond stuff was done by Mask. A bunch of the randoms done by uh, Mask. Bryn, um, Chibi, nice. Chibi, Roma. Roma. <laughs> um, I think Arts I saw some. Apple. Yeah, and I think I saw some Heizart too. You did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody, thank you so much for everything. I can't thank enough. Um, missing Bryn, Roma, Mask. You guys have been and Heart. You guys have been a joy to work with, commission-wise. And there's more coming, and more more people, and more characters you'll see. I'm sure I fucking oh, got yeah. some. There's yeah, <laughs> you guys have no idea. Thank you, everyone, for making this possible. Um, it's it's really been a joy. This is this has been an incredible experience. Thank you from the bottom of my of my heart. Fucking thank you. And thank you, Jay. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Honestly, this was amazing. I'm so Yay! happy it's finally happening. Yeah, it I'm happened. so happy. <sighs> thank you, and with Jay, that, thank I... You, Jay-Man, thank you, Roma. Thank you so fucking much, Jay-Man. Jay-Man's also the power behind the throne and has done a lot of it, like a lot of the, the camera work, a lot of the maps, just like constantly working and making the shit better. And um, yeah, thank you, Roma, for a fucking fantastic session, and thank you for Cassius. Um, I can't think of a better note to end it off on other than treat yourselves right and have a good night. <laughs> have a good night. See ya, folks. Good night, everyone. <sighs>